So that was seconded by Mr. Gilbert of Worcester. Uh, any, um, any further discussion about this? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Now, this is the one uh, about developing some financial oversight <coughs> procedures. And once again, I, I mean, because we are talking about finances, I am looking for permission from the board to do this sort of stuff. Well, I'm, I'm not going to just assume responsibility over the board's money without permission. So the CVI, so this is a motion here. I move the CVI Finance Committee will develop and submit to the full board for approval a set of policies and procedures designed to assure the integrity and transparency of revenues and expenses. The committee may, if necessary, implement these policies and procedures prior to initial approval, except that such action does not create a precedent. In other words, let the committee develop our policies and procedures for working within the committee. We will bring them back for permission, but if we come up with something, we need to be able to start working with it right away. Okay, so there's there's a motion. I'll second. Okay, seconded by Gilbert Worcester. Thoughts? Discussion? I do have one quick question. Uh, with no familiarity on what the appropriate regulations are for an organization such as this, are there any standards that we are held to, like GASB, FASB, or any of that other stuff, should we so state in the motion? The, the GASB part, actually, I, I've got another sheet I'm not going to introduce here. I, I, I it has to do with I started discussion. writing up. No, I, I, and I just, because I have another sheet where I actually did start to write up a set of proposed you know, uh, policies and procedures that will go back to the uh, finance committee that does deal with the GASB part of that itself as a policy procedure thing. We're not legally, I don't think, required to do it, but I, I mean, GASB, it, it, it's... It's there. It's there, and it's, it's there. what everybody it's working in the weeds. Under. Yes. So what I, what, what I would say, I mean, in the interest of simplicity, I like the motion. I'd just like to close the door on Gatsby, FASB, and also make sure that we pay particular attention to internal controls, because that's the area where most organizations get tripped up. Okay, can I, can I ask then that if you keep that in mind, can we revisit that when we come back with the yes, policies and procedures? Yes, sir, I do not need to uh, distract or in any way interrupt yeah. the proceedings here. No, I, I, I understand. <laughs> I, I understand where you're going, and I agree with you. I just would like the chance to bring them back under another format and so, yep, see if that yep. meets what you're looking and, for. And, and could I recommend that you two connect separate from the meeting so that, Bob, if you can take your concerns and any sort of specific advice and uh, tips and tricks <clears> that <throat> they can take, and while they're crafting these bits and pieces, then they can bring it back to I'll, us. I'll give them a trail map because I don't have internet. That's fine. Uh, that's all right. That's fine. Why do you think I'm here? I, I, I pee over passenger pigeon. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, find a way to make it work. Yeah. You, you have a phone, though, right? It's a cell phone. Oh, it's Vermont. Okay. Sometimes you have a phone. Yeah, right. not, you have cell service. It's not Vermont. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I don't. But actually, okay. in my house, uh, I appear to be in an overlap area. And if I move, Three or four feet from one side to the other, I get a dropped call. It's a real circus. That sounds super fun. Any other uh, comments about the um, what Rama's motion about the Finance Committee developing financial oversight policies and procedures at Al? I'll take that as a no. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, now these last two, this next one is a, it's important because it is in the statute, we need to take care of it. Uh, so the motion is the CBI Governing Board directs the Treasurer to create a, as soon as practicable a capital reserve fund with an initial balance of zero dollars or more. <laughs> so, that's a, that's a motion. That's Second. A motion. Okay. Seconded now, by Paragon of Orange. It, it is required under the enabling statute, uh, you know, 30 BFA <coughs> Chapter 82, 3078, uh, subsection B, that we create this. It's there. Thank you, Act 46. Introduce me to the word practicable. I would love it. That, that word, because actually, if you look it up in the dictionary, it is so handy for those things that you want to do when they're possible to be done successfully. And that's essentially what practicable means. So. Rather than saying, you know, right now go out and set up that fund, you know, it's as you get to it when it's possible to set it up. 
All the statute says is we have to set it up. It doesn't say by any given date or anything. Okay, so there's a motion about the treasurer creating that capital reserve fund according to statute. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining. Motion passes unanimously. And Keep this, going. this last one that I have here, and I, I don't know, this one may take some discussion. So I'm just going to, I'm not making the motion yet. Let me just read what I wrote down for the motion because it's got some blanks in it. Mm -hmm. So the motion that I would present is the CVI Governing Board appoints the following persons as receivers of funds of any lawful type from any lawful source. Then it goes blank, blank, and the CVI treasurer. Such funds shall not be considered received by the Central Vermont Internet until one of the listed persons has control of the funds. I, that would be my initial, other than the fact I got two blanks in there, you know? So I, I, this is one that I have to just bring up and put out there for some conversation to see. You know. yeah, well, there's receipt and there's disbursement. Uh, do you want to deal with them as separate issues, or do you want to bake that into this single directive? No, because the disbursement would be will be handled actually by the treasurer, by definition by the treasurer, okay. and with the oversight of presumably somebody from the finance committee or maybe somebody. That, that will be part of the uh, policies and procedures that would actually come out. This part, though, is, you know, about bringing in money, and I don't feel that that should be a committee decision. So, and, and disbursement also, that also always has to be approved by the board. Yeah, yeah, that, that's fine. I, I'm, from a, I'm from a world where uh, various responsible managers and executives were given what was called signatory authority. And they didn't have to go dancing down to the treasurer to spend up X amount of money on pre-budgeted items. And I don't know if we want to get to that level of internal controls. I, and I, I think we will at some point. I don't think that's today. All right. This is on the receipt. This is on the receipt of money. Yeah, this is just for receiving money. Yeah, I, I raised I raised the issue of disbursement as to whether or not that should be a separate and distinct thing, which I would recommend. Yeah. So, who should those people be? I mean, currently, um, currently, the finance chair has signatory power. On the to sign checks. To sign checks. Didn't we agree on this last month when we did the treasurer? That's the, that's the signatory bit, but actually, too, for him to, oh, to, for him to receive funds. And oh, I no. may not be the best person to, you know? I mean, it may be that uh, the Business Development Committee, when they're out uh, raising funds, or I, it may be that we may have people specifically designed to raise funds who should be the ones, you know, if, if they're going to be out, the people out asking for money from folks, those should be the ones that are uh, receiving the funds. Uh, forgive my experience here, but what does it mean to receive funds in this case? So, for example, if we had like an Indiegogo account or something like that, where we're receiving money money directly to an account, is that through you or is that separate? Or I don't. You you mean money that's intended for CVI? Yeah. That I would I would suggest that if we have anything set up like that, where people could just automatically put money in without any interaction from us that that be something that be under the sole control of the treasurer <coughs> period and i can i can give you a specific example uh town meeting this year i had somebody walk up to me and say i want to donate money and i said hold that thought we need a bank account first and an organization first and a whole bunch of other things first and i said just hold on so if somebody wants to donate they just want to write us a check if we have subscribers at some point. I mean, they're going to write a check somewhere. Somebody is going to be, you know, if they do direct deposit, great, or you know, direct bill pay, great. But if they write a check, somebody is going to have to be able to pick up that money and call it received and deposit it then. So I think this is a reasonable first step. I don't think it's earth shattering, but I think we need more than the treasurer, probably two or three people. My, my thought of this is that um, I know a couple of you in here fairly well, and you know you're all. We've all done municipal things in the past. Do we want to require a background check for people who are receiving money on for the district? Does that make sense, or is that something that we should wait on? 
We need money to do it. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> but we could ask each person to, to you know, to, to pay for it themselves initially, or or something. We can we can figure it out. What, what kind of background check are we talking? Because it depends you know, on what they're going so, so 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 here's, I mean, the the, the way towns the way towns would do it, uh, the way the way a lot of towns do it is they actually bond on. So we just make sure that we have, you know, the, the people who are receiving money bonded. That's another another alternative too. But um, a, a financial background check, that's not that's something that's done with some uh, town treasurers. Although even if, if they fail their background check, there's not much you can do because they're elected officials. But so I mean, it's 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 a thought. I'll put it out there. I think this is probably fraught with more questions than we're going to have answers to tonight. Okay. Yeah. What? I mean, we could do one of two things. We could say the Finance Committee is going to grapple with this and try to ask questions to figure out what we really want to do. If we want a stopgap measure, I would suggest we have the officers appointed to be people who can receive money on behalf of the organization. So the, the, the statutory officers, the chair, vice yeah, chair, yeah. treasurer, and... On the theory that there's a certain level of trust in the officers and that no background check is needed. Okay. That, that, that's just a suggestion. I mean, if, if, if we really want to start receiving money and we think it's important to do it tonight, that's what I would suggest. Really. Okay. So, John? I'd say that's a prudent measure at this stage of the game, like when money really starts rolling in, I think it would be appropriate to come up with a different procedure yeah. and position that maybe is background checked. But you know, how, how much is going to be rolling in in the next year? Well, you could actually look at the budget. Though. <laughs> <laughs> it's as accurate as you're going to get. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so uh, then how about this for a motion? The CBI governing board appoints the chair, vice chair, treasurer, and clerk as receivers of funds of any lawful type from any lawful source. Such funds shall not be considered received by the Central Vermont Internet until one of the listed persons has control of the funds. Sounds like a motion. I'll second that. Seconded by Mr. Healy. Yeah. Should there be a second person involved? A second person involved. In receiving the money? Oh. Verifying that the first person received it so that it, that's, that's a check and balance that would obviate the need for a background check if we have less chance of two people conspiring to steal their money. <laughs> Can you tell us how that would actually work? Yeah, that's my thought. Mm -hmm. how? Would I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> um, you? Would two people have to be present? Like, would somebody have to come to the Berlin town meeting when Jeremy was handed a check for $500? It's a good question. I don't know. I'm just trying to imagine how we could... If some philanthropic person handed somebody on the board a check away from public meeting. I don't know how we would we, we, I, I think we, would, force I think we, we would we would issue a receipt for that check. Yeah. Perhaps maybe more formally in the form of a letter acknowledging the gift or donation. But that that written amount would verify the amount that was given would provide the paper trail that goes along with the money. That's sort of the standard so cash the, receipts. So the policy. donor would expect the receipt, and yeah. Yeah. that would, yeah. and the receipt would come from the board as opposed to the well, person receiving. Well, it's, it's tax deductible. I mean, they're going to want. They're, so want, they're going to want a receipt. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> but it does raise a value. Well, no, I, I don't want because it, you know we get to what happens if people start <laughs> handing you twenty and thirty dollars here and there, yeah. right? But we can worry about that or not at some future date. Yeah, people handing cash is probably a terrible idea. Yeah, <laughs> and we yeah. probably should refuse it. I actually had the same thought, and from school board procedures, there's always someone from the school board who will uh, basically go through bills and receipts, basically doing a uh, reconciliation on the account on a monthly basis presented by the treasurer or business manager in that case. So that could be a way where we have two people Looking okay. through everything that's come in, everything that's gone out, and signed off on it. I think I think that's a that's a good idea, and that's I mean we do the same thing on the select board. One of the, one of the things <coughs> we do is we get a big stack of all the outbound checks. It's like here's you know here's all the money that's going out, and we make formal motions to 
send those checks or to issue payroll or to make changes to the bank account and that sort of thing. So I, I think that's I think that's probably the, the sensible move once there's something coming in. Well, I'm kind of hoping that as we get into it, that that will be delegated to the finance committee. And that seems like a to totally make sure we can get bills paid when we start getting bills. We'll be successful when we get bills. Right. <laughs> All right, um, so that, there's a, that motion on the table about accepting funds. Any other discussion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Motion passes unanimously. And, and the last thing, Mr. Gilbert, and because, and I just should say, I, I'm not even thinking about presenting my version of it because what I have is, is a more detailed and I would need actually some time in a presentation. So, yeah. I, well, let let me just say what I've done, and I've emailed it to everybody. Um, so you should have it if you can log on to your computers if you really want to see it. This is this is not a major work of intellectual fortitude or anything. Uh, what I did was I just went through all the stat the the statute the enabling statute we have, uh, 30 BSA, you know, and I picked out all the things that had a a task to which time uh, completion was assigned, and I just I just made a narrative. It's two and a half pages. It literally goes month by not every month, but any of a number of months, and then it also includes what I call recurring tasks, which is things like for every regular meeting, for a special meeting, and then there are some annual things to do, and then there are some at any time things to do. An example of an at any time is a certificate of public good must be obtained from the PUC before the district sells any service using a communications plan. For the most part, I've steered away from using the statutory language. I've tried to put it in English that we can all understand and talk about. But I do give the citation in my list, so if you want to go look at the statute and see what the language is, uh, particularly if you think I've misinterpreted, uh, you, you should definitely do that and let me know. But it's, it's not a complicated document, and I think connected with, with what Ron is working on, which is a, a much more detailed sort of task-oriented document, the two things together, when we've got them finalized, uh, will be useful. And I, I suspect that there's some other stuff that could be included in here, maybe longer term, of like kind of generic municipal responsibilities and things, things that we have to do or have to think about, too, but I, I, I really appreciate that you're boiling this down because actually as I was drafting <coughs> the annual report draft that we have, um, I, I went to look at this and then I, I realized like, oh, we actually have to hold a public hearing and invite the legislative bodies of the towns and the cities to come and comment on this. Like, better put that in as an invite at the very end. So, great. Um, so I would encourage all of you to take a look at that. Um, that should have come in an email to everybody, looks like. Yeah. So thank you for that. Anything else, um, Rama, for uh, Finance Committee? Well, I'll uh, turn to my fellow Finance Committee members. If you guys have anything else to bring up, I'm all done. OK. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to um, resolving conflicts of interest. <clears throat> this um, actually relates back to the discussion we were having just a few minutes ago um, about uh, organizational names and trade names. Um, and I don't know if I have enough of these for everybody, so maybe if you could go every other person. Um, I discovered a short time ago that Mr. Whitaker uh, had registered Central Vermont Internet as a trade name uh, with the Secretary of State's office. Uh, I think, I believe it was the day after town meeting day. So this body was essentially authorized by the votes on town meeting day. The following day, he registers that name as a trade name We're doing business as his nonprofit corporation, which is Design Access Network. Um, it's certainly not up to me to <clears throat> determine whether or not this rises to a conflict of interest. But it does concern me. Um, I think it's something that you should have disclosed. and You've had a lot of months to do that. But I guess I'd like to start out, and I'm sure some other people have some questions for you, is that what was your motivation in doing that? 
it's a was a decision between the board members of of the nonprofit, and I'll leave it. To You're gonna leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. Wow. It seems to me then that the board members of your nonprofit intentionally were trying to create confusion um, with this organization, possibly compete against the organization, doing business as, uh, taken literally. Um, it just seems like a reach that that had to come from somewhere. So you presented that to your board of directors and thought that was a good idea? So, so, so hold on. Yeah. <clears throat> so that we can follow rules of, rules of protocol, yes. if I can please call on people that want to talk, and we're going to wait for everybody to be able to weigh in before a person talks for a second time. Sure. Okay. So, you got that, um, Phil? Javon? What nonprofit are we talking about? It's called Design Access Network Incorporated. It's the same partners, Mr. Whitaker, Mr. Oh, Larkin. Oh, and um, your attorney, I believe, uh, Mr. Slot. Okay. David? Uh, where are we going with this? I think he has a conflict of interest. Oh, okay. Jerry? I can but help but also point out the typical and consistent disruptive behavior of Mr. Whitaker towards this body. There is, appears to me, which is speculation, that there's a real pattern of behavior here that is quite troublesome. I don't know what can be done about it, but I believe it needs to be noted outright. Okay. Anybody else? Oh, I'd repeat the same thing. I'd Mr. Whitaker has a consistent behavior pattern that's interruptive, disruptive, non-respective to other members of the board and the volunteers that are trying to help the organization. And I want that on public record. Okay. I don't know if this is actually a conflict of interest in that um, per se, but it definitely is. I mean, we should be pursuing, uh, you know, contesting the DBA or the trade name that this is under because it's clearly it's clearly would be rejected, should be rejected based on the fact that we have, that's the name that this union, communication union is certified under it. Whether it has any, what the, uh, what the intent was or not, it doesn't matter. It certainly creates confusion. The thing that does concern me and is like, I just don't know how to even, I'm just very upset. <laughs> it's like, all this time, you find every reason, Mr. Whitaker, to say and call out just about every aspect of anyone's process or things that you disagree with pretty vehemently and yet you keep this on your head. Were we just supposed to discover this on our own? I guess we should have. I mean, that's maybe the implication. I don't know. It's very concerning and it's also to what end? Like uh, Mr. Hag asked. I don't, I don't know what that, you know. I think you might suggest to the board members that they surrender it if, well, you know. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Can we at least stick to the so I, I, I would like to, to recognize Mr. Whitaker. Yeah, please, please, please respond. I just think it's a non-issue. I think if you want to, if you want to do business under that name, you ask them for it. If you want to do business under CV Fiber, it's immaterial. Yeah, we are. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is there, I, I want, I want I, to let him finish so that we yeah. can. I'm, I'm not going to stoop to the, you know, character assassination. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, a couple of things is, is I because the vote was held for the name when the vote was held the name Central Vermont Internet was put on the ballot correct right mm -hmm. um, I, I would I would say that it's probably a good case to if we have a couple thousand dollars to walk into court and contest that DBA. Uh, simply on the basis that his connection with the organization, the vote, the timing of the filing for the DBA, whether or not it was a decision of the board or not, I think is something that we could contest if we so choose to. The other part is that if people feel that any individual on this board, whether, uh, whether it's a delegate or an alternate, is being 
for whatever reason that being considered disruptive or what we we are allowed to request of the appointing municipality to remove them from their position. That's our sole remedy on this. That you know that, that's we can't remove somebody from from this board whether they're an alternate or a delegate. So if people do feel that there is an issue with conflict of interest, if they feel that there's an issue with disruption, then it should just be a simple board decision to request that the city of Mount Taylor remove Mr. Whitaker from any seating at the table for Central Vermont Internet. Because that that's all we're that's that's all we're allowed to do. Having said that, is I hope that, and I, I do agree, that we need to be very careful about not questioning motives. Because motives that to us may seem really obnoxious and a pain in the butt could make a whole lot of sense to the individual trying to get something done in their own way. So I just hope we stay away from the motives, stick to what it is that we're trying to accomplish, and. Uh, and one of the things that we're trying to accomplish is a secure organization, and part of that organization is the name Central Vermont Internet, regardless of who decides to go to the Secretary of State's office. So that's all I got to say on that. Anybody else that hasn't spoken yet that wants to weigh in on this? So, Stephen, if I could ask. Do you feel it's a conflict of interest that you have registered the name Central Vermont Internet? No. And it's not I that have registered it, it is Design Access Network. So I can't speak, I'm not authorized to speak unilaterally. But you represent that organization? When authorized to, but you're asking me to. And so so can, can we avoid the kind of in interrogative? If you want to, if you have some comments or like a, like a package of questions, if you can ask that and then you can come back around and, and answer those, I think that would be more helpful and more Well, conducive. I don't know how to do this otherwise, but I'll suggest that we have a conflict of interest that hasn't been disclosed and that what Rama was just suggesting, that gives us uh, I mean, we, we can always ask a municipality to no longer have a certain person represent the municipality, but I think that gives us strong grounds to ask that my failure not represent, not have uh, Stephen as, as a delegate or as a alternate. Uh, I, I'm, if, if, if I could just have a point of privilege here. I'm really disappointed, Stephen. I've been rooting for you real hard, and for you to have pulled something like this has I, I'm just so disappointed because I know how smart you are and I know how persistent you are, and you've done something that just defies rationality. You're questioning motives oh, here. Oh, point point of order. He's entitled to speak. Please continue, Adam. That's all I have to say. Okay, Siobhan. Are we allowed to ask questions? I mean, obviously, I just asked you a question, but. <laughs> well, so, so, so that's a that's a. Yeah, that's a Point of order: You can always ask the chair about okay. procedure. That's that's okay. Um, if the if the board is is okay with it, and Stephen, if you're willing to respond to it with sort of a more question and answer, once the question is finished, the answers come. If everybody's okay with that, I would happily sort of relax our our format. Is everybody generally amenable? Okay. Point of order: Two. I, I just point out that our our policy on conflicts of interest provide. Uh, the governing board shall be afforded an opportunity to ask the board member questions regarding the conflict of interest and to discuss the same. Solved then. Easily enough. Yeah. Thank you. Why did you do this? It was a decision made in collaboration with other directors. Were you part of that decision? I was. What was the reason behind the decision? Uh, to keep the discussion open about whether or not the use of the word internet puts us in an untenable position of this puts CD, so it puts the communications union district in an untenable position of selling regulated telecommunication services. So it is, it is got, there is rationale, there is a legal basis. I think 
I said at the first meeting that this board needs legal counsel. Obviously, Rob can't be legal counsel to this board, but this needs to be this and the public records issue raised at the last meeting need to be this board needs a legal counsel, not a bunch of amateurs arguing over their interpretation of the law. And why did you wait for this to come out instead of telling this to the board at the first meeting? The board, the organization didn't exist until today. As oh, certain, please. Okay. Qu questions and answers will, will suffice. Thank you. Oh, hold on. Right. John Quinn is up next. My question was, why didn't you disclose it? I mean, if, if you had, uh, you know, uh, an honest intent here, why didn't you just disclose that you had registered the name? We've had the discussion several times. I think that only time that would be necessary would be if there was a decision made by Design Access Network to use that name in trade. That would create a conflict. Right now, there isn't one. Anything else, John? Yep. Rama, did you have something? or, 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 or did, Well, I, or, I'll let somebody go first because I have a motion. Michael? I have one question. Um, um, are you prepared to relinquish that DBA to this board today? That's not my decision to make. Would you recommend it to your partners? After, after I consulted with them. Would you recommend it? Okay, so so uh, before we have a motion, if we if you can indulge me, Rama, is there is there anybody else who has questions? Okay. So I I would move that the CBI board chair request Montpelier City Council remove Stephen Whitaker from any position on the Central Vermont Internet Board of uh, or Governing Board rather. Than Second. Board of Directors. Here. Second. Okay, that was um, Schneider and Gilbert from Cabot. Okay, any further discussion? Really? No, no, nothing else? I would just like to say I find in my two short meetings you have been generally a hostile member of this board and totally unproductive, and I will definitely vote for that motion. My comment is that if, if well, I guess you're, this isn't based on the perceived conflict. The motion is not based on the conflict, so it doesn't matter whether you get legal advice of whether there's a conflict or not there. Okay. Any other comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Um, I, I would like to do this with a show of hands, or would you prefer to just do a voice vote? Do you have a preference? All right, let's do it by voice, and if it's we can't figure it out, then we'll do it by a show of hands. So all in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, abstaining? I'm abstaining. Okay. So um, let the record show it was unanimous except for two abstentions. Okay. So we're still talking about conflicts of interest, and I think it behooves us to lay anything out on the table. If there's anything else, if people are suspicious that there are conflicts of interest of other board members, if there are board members that know they have conflicts, this would be the time to, to bring them out. Yeah, John. So, as I said in the first meeting, I, I am the state CIO, and the state does have, um, uh, while not my agency, there are parts of state government that would have some regulatory authority over this board. So to lay it out on the table, just so everyone's still aware, I'm still the state CIO, at least today. <laughs> and um, secondly, my family owns Transvideo Cable in Northfield, um, which I think some of you already knew anyways, but just to lay it out, um, my family owns that, which provides uh, internet to 1,500 people approximately in Northfield. So, and so if maybe and so in terms of votes, you would want to recuse yourself from Absolutely. if you wanted to. If you wanted to mention what what sort of circumstances could you imagine recusing yourself because of those conflicts? Um, I don't know. Um, I, I can't think of anything um, besides you know. It, it, I guess if there was a discussion and a decision to compete with Trans Video in Northfield, I would uh, absolutely recuse myself. Okay. Um, if there was a um, vote on maybe 
um, um, or discussion on funding around the state of Vermont asking for funds, I would probably refuse myself. Those type of things. Okay. I think that makes sense. Anybody have any questions for John while we're talking about this? Yeah. Just, do you have any financial investment in Transmedia? Or is it just family members only? Not today. Okay. And, and at the next meeting, I'll, di I'll disclose if, if, if that changes. But there would be none directly in that business. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask if your family are the sole owners of the company? Yes. And can you define family here? Uncle and aunt. Okay, great. Okay. Any other questions for John? Yeah, back. Uh, mine isn't for John. Um, just, we just had a motion passed to do something, but nobody was assigned to do it. No, it was in the motion. I was assigned to do it. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Got it. Thank you. Okay, it's my turn. Unless, unless anybody still has questions for John. Are you responsible for signing internet contracts for the state of Vermont? For services? Uh, network network services, absolutely. So that'd be another area that uh, we would have someone else. I would refuse myself from being involved here. Okay. You taking comments on these individual conflicts? Or? Absolutely. This is this is the time to to put things out there. If you have a question for John, we are. We are going through the process as described in our conflict of interest well, policy that the board will have the opportunity to. This is something that I have alluded to in a couple of meetings. Uh, in effect, part of the reason that our communications are so deficient around the state is the state's failure to complete telecommunications planning according to statute. and. And also, which agencies are supposed to do what? Public Service Department is supposed to do planning. Uh, DII is supposed to manage networks. And we have a situation where public safety is running networks, and public, and FirstNet was under John's supervision, was granted a $25 million, 25 year contract but to. So, 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 I mean, is, is there a question about the conflict that, that yes, you're... Yes. Okay. Well, it's not a question. It's basically, there's a blatant conflict here in that apologists for failed planning at the state level cannot help but affect what we aspire to do. Uh, we can't work double time. That's a presumptive. So, hold on, hold on, hold on. Point, point of order. Point of order. I've been involved in this for 25 years, and we, this, a, this entity will not survive if be able to effectively compete or build if the failures to implement open access fiber rules, po expedited poll attachment dispute resolution, all of this falls under John's purview. Okay, so because there's no question, I would like to, to wrap this up. So, so Jim, do you have the rules of procedure? Hold on a second. Do you have the rules of procedure in front of you about conflicts mm -hmm. that define what a conflict of interest is? Sure. Would you, would you read that definition, please? For the purpose of this policy, a conflict of interest means the direct personal or pecuniary interest of a governing board member, his or her spouse, household member, business associate, employer, or employee, in the outcome of a cause, proceeding, application, or any other matter pending before the governing board or the governing board member. The conflict of interest does not arise in the case of votes or decisions on matters in which the governing board member has a personal or pecuniary interest in the outcome of a voter decision that is no greater than that of other persons generally affected by the decision. Okay, thank you for that. Yep. And, and the reason I, I wanted you to, to read that is that um, I, I understand the, I understand what, where you're coming from and some of the, the commentary that you're saying. I don't necessarily uh, agree with it or sort of understand the, all the background and the context. But I don't think that what you're describing there rises <coughs> to a conflict in the definition that we have in our policy, or the definition that matter at several places in statute. So, there was a there was a comment, John. Did you want to respond? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really going to respond to say you know everything you said wasn't necessarily accurate as far as what my responsibilities are and who makes decisions about um, some of the decisions made. I advise the governor on technology. Uh, but as far as you know, who makes you know who drives decision on first steps and things like that, that's you know 
Yeah. So I would just take everything that you said with a grain of salt. Please. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions for John about conflicts of interest? Okay. Michael, I believe you wanted to, to talk now. Yes. Um, I think you all know that I'm an internet service provider on two counts. In central Vermont, in our region, I'm one of five owners of Cloud Alliance, which is a fixed wireless internet service provider serving a dozen towns. Um, and so as such, what we as a body are doing is setting up something that ultimately will compete with my own company. So I have a structural conflict of interest there. Um, why am I on the board? Um, to be honest, for one thing, to look out for my company a little bit, but also because I believe in this mission. So I think that I can contribute. I think you, I hope, hope you agree that I have up till now, and I intend to continue. Um, and I also intend to recuse myself from any discussions that are directly about my company. And, um, and I will take advice from others if they think that I've um, missed the opportunity to recuse myself, number one. Number two, the second company is King of Fiber, which you're all aware of as well, because I presented it to you in that primer. Um, King of Fiber does not um, conflict with Central Vermont Fiber in that the geographic region is different. Um, but there's always the potential, not the likelihood, but the potential that Kingdom Fiber or even Cloud Alliance could end up being a collaborator with this board's efforts. It could be some version of a ballet net for this board's efforts. And as such, if that were to come up, I would recuse myself from those decisions as well. Yeah, I don't have a conflict to disclose, but I do want to say that with these conflicts, this has all been actually anticipated in the enabling law. And I say this because I've been introduced now to the uh, Chapter 82 of, uh, uh, what is that, 30 BSA, yeah. to a third way of voting on committees. The basic way of voting, uh, defined under law, the way the boards and committees vote under law is you have to have a majority of the board members present in order to have a quorum and a majority of the board members, not just those that are present, but a majority of the board members have to vote to agree on something for it to pass. So that's the default way. For school boards, it changes a little bit there because now you don't have to have a majority of the board members to have something pass. You just have to have a majority of the uh, of the quorum to have something passed. Under Chapter 82, the third way is we have to have the quorum to have the meeting and be able to hold a legally vote, binding vote, but the vote passes based upon the votes of those casting votes. In other words, the anticipation is that there are going to be people that come in here with conflicts of interest that have to sit back and say, I can't vote. If we sat here in the whole room and we had a question, and this is really how the law reads if you go back and look at it, and everybody but three of us had conflicts of interest, those three people would be the deciding voters. So I, I, I just say that this is anticipated, so having the conflicts is fine. You just have to be aware of them, and people have to step back from decision making. So, um, well, I, I'd like, if we could, if anybody has any questions for Michael, we, we will get back to you, John. Does anybody have any questions for Michael? I, I, I have one. Which, <clears throat> which towns does Cloud Alliance operate in, and could therefore com conceivably be competing? Both our towns. Yeah. Um, Who's our list again? It's at the bottom of the agenda, or uh, right the agenda. very, very bottom. And, uh, I can read them and you can say yes or no. Oh, wait. It's on the minutes. Oh, here. Okay. Oh, right here. Okay. Um, Barrytown, Berlin, Cabot, Callis, East Montpelier, Marshfield, Plainfield, and that's it. Okay. So that's more than half of them. Okay. 
Thanks for that. Any other questions Circle for down. Michael? Yep. Yeah. Just Michael, I'm sorry. I just have a question. Yeah, I, I have found you very helpful. Um, and you seem quite reasonable. I think the only thing that I would ask is if at some point the course of this um, this body goes in direct conflict, i.e., uh, it's no longer it, it could mean the end of your company or a com major combatant to your company for business, would you seem it reasonable to resign or do you feel like you could still uh, carry on and help help the cause as you as you put it in, in terms of if it, if it gets to the point where it could cause you financial harm for our success? Um, Is that something that you would envision saying it's time for me to... I, I already know it will cause my company financial harm, and I'm accepting that. Um, I, th I think I'll be able to continue to serve the board. Um, there is, there are possibilities where Platt Alliance and CV Fiber could cooperate and find find solutions that are win-win. And I, I would hope for that, but I, you know, I can't demand it. Um, so I, I think I think um, until there's an obvious um, fatal conflict, I don't see a need to resign. I'm not but asking I, for it. I'm just wondering. No, I know that. that. I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking out loud with you. I I I think it'll be fine, but um, if it gets to a, some kind of nasty point, we'll know, <laughs> and I'll bail. But I don't think it will. I mean, I have confidence in us, but um, we'll see. Thank you. I, I think the other thing to keep in mind, though, is that I think it's the responsibility of this board to make sure your town is adequately represented. And it could get to a point where, even though you think you can manage the conflict that's there, mm -hmm. you might not actually be able to adequately represent your town. And I can't think of an example, but I can imagine a townsperson, somebody from your town coming to this meeting when you're not voting on, it, on an endless number of issues, wondering what's going on here. Uh -huh. And I, I think it would be the responsibility of this board to possibly <clears throat> address that, which is why I think our conflict of interest policy has that clause that says we can get in touch with the municipality and suggest maybe the person should be should be replaced with somebody else. So I'm, I'm, can I speak? Mm -hmm. so, well, I'm good with that. Um, um, when I, when the town um, looked to appoint a delegate, they didn't just pull me out of a hat, they actually interviewed a bunch of people and I presented to them at that time there will be a conflict of interest if I'm the delegate, and I do intend to recuse myself from any conflicting issues, and they were comfortable with it. And, but that could change, and the board could contact the town, or the town could complain, and in either case, I would be responsive to that. And I don't think there's any difference ex from John's conflict with, with, with Transvideo. It's, we're gonna, steal customers from Transvideo too, and um, his company's bigger than mine. His aunt's and uncle's business is bigger than Cloud Alliance, even though it only serves a couple of towns or one. Is it just in Northfield? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, we, we don't have 1,500 customers. So we're facing the same sorts of things, and I think we'll both I know John and I will both be responsible towards that, but, but the board has the right to call us on it. So. I, I'd also like, like to point out we have alternates for yeah. both towns. Right. So That's if, we, if, you, if you guys anticipate that there are going to be votes that you're going to have to recuse yourself on, just make sure that Jeremy shows up and make sure that um, Mark shows up. Good point. Yeah, I, I just want to... I, I'm not being critical of, of anything you folks have done. Uh, sure. In fact, I'm praising the fact that you've disclosed this. I'm just trying to think of the responsibility we might have as a board 
to the towns. I mean, we're an odd duck, you know, these communication union districts. I, at times I'm not sure what kind of identity we really have and whose interests we're supposed to be representing. But I think in this, in this instance, we have a great responsibility to the communications union district generally and to the individual towns who we feel might not be able to be adequately represented because somebody is not able to vote on 60% of the things that are coming up. But I, I think Jeremy's point is, is it's good. There, there are alternates that, that can be used when this possibly might be coming up. So, yeah. Okay, your next question. Yeah, I, I think uh, I'm just going to speak to what he said about you know there, there being processes around us, and you know this is no different than a, your local select board, right? You know, when they're talking about your property, whether it's drainage or you know issues, plowing you know roads, you recuse yourself. Um, when they talked about my family business as a select board chair, I recuse myself. You know, I mean, in, in, in small town America, you know, you're you're connected every which way, you know, so. I mean, this is just something that I, I think we're going to have to watch closely. But, um, you know, in my letter to the, to the town, um, they're fully aware of both of my positions. Um, they interviewed me and Mark, or Mark and I spoke with both of them. Um, they're, they're, they were fully aware of, you know, uh, the positions and, and uh, conflicts that uh, may or may not be there. So any other questions for people? Are there any other um, perceived conflicts that anybody wants to ask about? I want to ask about your Northfield University contract with John Quinn for 600000 for the Security Operations Center. Okay. I mean, I know it exists. That's not something that I'm involved in personally. But your students are going to be paying in terms in doing providing the services Pre to that presumably contract. that I think that was the idea yeah and then that is going to become a it was represented to the joint fiscal committee that Northfield's looking to turn that into a service business and sell to other entities as well like this district that that I didn't know that's that's not something that I'm aware of is is that the contract for the security I'm sorry yeah the security operations center oh okay. as in network security yes yeah See, I, I, I see that it's not necessarily the bright lines of the way the language was crafted, which none of us who weren't lawyers really understood the implications of. I think it's more the pervasive kind of a complace, a potential complacence with poor planning, which, you know, becomes the norm in state government, but can't we can't afford to have the norm here. Or po potential uh, agreement with how we're going to steer the direction or the priorities of the board. I'm obviously frustrated with how slow we're moving, getting any plan at all even started, you know? And that reminds me of government. Okay. So um, I'm happy to announce or talk about this perception. I work for Norwich University. I'm a computer science professor. I teach computer science, computer security classes. There is a There were discussions that I was not part of. Uh, for my students to do security operations center work for the state of Vermont, and there's many of them that are excited about that. Um, that's not part of my kind of day-to-day -day job. Um, I know my students will do that, so um, I could see that I could see a conflict if um, this organization were to, on a contract or make an agreement with Norwich University, it would be appropriate for me to recuse myself at that point. I, I think that makes sense. In terms of anything else that's going on there, I'm, I'm not sure that there's that there's a conflict. If anybody else has questions for me, or anything that I can answer, any um, clarifications that I can make, I'm totally happy to do so. Yeah, Alan. Jerry, can I just ask, when you use the term "your students," does that mean you are mentoring a, a large group of students who have direct, or, or is it just the way that an academic? Teaching at a university would speak with the students who are enrolled in. Yes, and that's that's more what I'm talking about. I, I I think of my students as the students who are studying computer science or computer security and information assurance. We have two majors in sort of computing broadly described, and I will probably have all of them in a class at some point or the other. So those are those are my students. There's no direct connection in the way they perform for you or you perform for them. 
in determining some outcome that it means fulfillment of a contract or a so, so I mean so I, I could I could possibly have my name on an internship class and be the instructor of record for them to get um, college credit for doing something like this. That's how I could be directly involved in their participation in this. So in, in, in that sense, I would be responsible for giving them a grade. So you'd be a sponsor, essentially, mm -hmm. of their participation in that particular program? Correct. And, I, and I've done that before with, yeah. with other organizations. Okay. John, you had something? Yes. Okay. Uh, just for clarity, are you be are as as part of any uh, contract talks with the state of Vermont? Are you being asked to, or are you being paid for any type of role with that security operations center? So, I think I'm right that I don't have a conflict here, but I want to make sure because <laughs> so, so, I'm so, so well no so, let me let me explain. Yeah. That service is going to be used to test software I'm the lead developer on. That's my conflict. Is that a conflict? What service? What service? The, the security testing. They're going to be hammering at my software to see is it secure as part of that contract. So, so, so now, now I really think we're getting to the weeds because, again, the reason I asked Jim to describe what a conflict is. Um, if I had something, if Norwich had something to do with this board, I would step down, that guy would run the meeting, and I would smile and nod and perhaps answer questions if you, if you had them for me. I think what you're talking about is uh, if for some reason this board were uh, doing something, contracting with the company you work for or this, using the software that you're building or something like that, maybe I think we could talk. Yeah, no, um, I work for the state. Okay, so. Okay, go, go, it's great. Okay, thanks. So, any, any other questions for me, or for that matter, for Siobhan about <laughs> conflicts? I'm happy to talk about myself. Uh, I have a question about the process that we're mm -hmm. engaged in. Uh, 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 a few people have um, declared uh, potential conflicts, maybe, mm -hmm. uh, uh, going around. Uh, uh, not going around the table in an orderly way, really. Mm -hmm. um, it, was, it was more voluntary. So should we assume that anybody who hasn't spoken up uh, by implication is saying, I don't have any potential conflicts? Or, or that, or that you're, you don't think that you do. I mean, obviously, you can announce these things at any time. What, what I wanted to do through this is, that, is make sure that we essentially put all the cards out on the table if there was any sort of um, thoughts about conflicts that people are sort of talking about outside of the meeting, I want to just, to just lay the cards out on the table. I mean, we can be transparent about who our employers are. I think for the most part, everybody knows where everybody works. And that if we were to, if we as a board were to interact in some way with employers or family members or whatever, if that just came out of, you know, came as a surprise somehow, then clearly, clearly, those people would recuse themselves. If there's nothing like in the back of your mind saying, wow, wow, this, this, could, be, this could be something we might run into. I think looking at, at Michael's case and John's case, I think this is, more, this is more, <coughs> more cut and dried. I mean, it is exceedingly likely that we will somehow interact with Michael's company in some way. It's exceedingly likely that we will interact with the state yeah. in some way. So it's, I think it's a good idea to have these out in public and be clear about it. So I just wanted to give anybody a chance that had some sort of voluntary disclosure that they wanted to add as well. Sure, I work part-time for Stone Environmental. It's a GIS company that does a lot of data management, a lot of data, everything. And uh, if there's a bit of contract that goes out from this organization that might need that service, I would recuse myself. Okay. I work for a company that sells DC power backup for DSL providers. <laughs> Okay. Does anybody know? But I mean, in all seriousness, I, I, I appreciate those things. And when we start talking about, you know, battery backups and we start talking about GIS services, these are good things to know. I mean, it's good to know that you have the skills and the knowledge in those fields, but also that we're going to probably have to ask you to step aside and act maybe just more as an information source than, than anything else, than as a deciding member of the board. Is there anything else anybody else wants to, to I, weigh in on? I, um, 
I have been as, as disappointed in any, as anyone with Mr. Whitaker's approach to this work and to the, to the issues before this committee. Um, but I'll, I'd like to point out in the process that we just undertook, um, there was an opportunity for voluntary disclosure of potential conflicts that I'm concerned that Mr. Whitaker wasn't able to avail himself of before the issue was addressed. Um, and fundamentally, I'm concerned about the notion that, that this was sort of sprung upon him. And then after the fact, others that might have a conflict were allowed to voluntarily disclose that and have a board discussion to sort of exonerate them of that, of that potential conflict. And I think that it's important to recognize the difference in how that just happened. And maybe it, some consideration should be given to that in the previous motion that we approved. Um, and I'm just bringing that forward. Is, do we still want, in light of this notion that others have been given a voluntary opportunity to disclose their potential conflicts, do we still want to move forward with the motion that we approved previously? I would, there, I appreciate that, and, and I think it's thoughtful, but I would also counter that there's a difference between the hypothetical and the actual action. Okay. And then an action was taken, the rest of this discussion was hypothetical. And that's a fundamental difference. And I would also say my, my motion, or I, I, I made it, I, the, the conflict part was probably the least important part of it all. For, the, for my rationale for asking for that, so. But I, I do, I agree with that. I mean, we're talking about in one act, in one instance where action was actually taken, mm -hmm. and in the other instances that these people haven't taken action. And uh, so I, I, I do think there's a substantial difference in the circumstances. Okay. Anybody else, any other thoughts? Yeah, no. Michael? Uh, this has been a a valuable exercise. I'm really glad it happened. It's not the end. We should have recurrent discussions like this. So in the future, new conflicts might arise, or different levels of conflict might arise, and we should discuss them when it comes up. And could I invite anyone who discovers a conflict or thinks they might have a conflict, particularly um, when you know these things in advance, to bring that up either in public comment or ask to put it on the agenda before the item in question so that we can be we can be clear and have at least have a chance to talk about it. I mean, just you know, backing your chair away and saying I'm recusing myself, we typically would like to have a little bit more information than that. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Putting the nail on that one. Future meeting length. I was not there. <laughs> <laughs> you got, you got hold on, hold on. Minutes. <laughs> hold on. Future meeting length. So I, I heard after I left the, the, the previous meeting that uh, the meeting should be shorter. I scheduled this one to be a half an hour shorter. And I'm going to do my best to keep us as close to on time as possible. So now, we're at 7.05, so we're 20 just minutes. Order, we're 20 minutes. Just to correct the record, there were some people who were suggesting for more than half an hour shorter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Baby steps. There, there was a motion, I believe, to shorten it to two hours. Two hours. Was there that, was, that was not reflected was in the minutes. No? I don't think it was a motion. No, it was just part of the round table. The, Okay, that's true. <laughs> yeah. but, but it was fairly consensus. <laughs> so, okay. so if you'd like to make that motion, I mean, it is on the agenda right now. If you want to, if you want to constrain ourselves to two hours, that's, that's fine. Or I can constrain my agenda setting to two hours. How about that? That makes more sense because sometimes things are going to come up that are going to take more time. I, I would not make that motion. Um, I think... Is it all right to discuss that? Absolutely. Okay. Without a motion on the floor? Okay. Yeah, we're um, sort of loose Robert's rules at this yeah, point. Yeah. I, I just, I, I think uh, the more that committees do the work of the board, the shorter these meetings will be. be. Mm -hmm. But we have to be careful that the committee reports don't replace all of that and make it just as long. I think one reason last week's me last month's meeting was long is that Rama had a lot to say about finance. And it was all important, 
and it made the, it, it was part of the reason that meeting was really long. So I think we all have to edit ourselves so in the interest of getting through a meeting. That's all. Okay. Anything else on meeting length? Moving along. Bylaw and Policy Committee report back. Jim, you got like 30 seconds. I'm going to edit, I'm going to edit myself. <laughs> there is a, a policy on data acquisition and retention that will be coming from the Bylaw and Policy Committee at some point in the future. The first draft has been developed and circulated. We may have to have a subsequent meeting to, to finalize that before it's presented to the board. Um, we also discussed at our last meeting a uh, notion of a policy on financial procedures, but it was recognized by the committee that that was something that really needed to come back to the board. Uh, that it really, we didn't have a place in that discussion at that point in time. So you can expect uh, probably at the next meeting a policy on data uh, acquisition and retention coming forward for your consideration. Thank you for that. Are there any questions or, um, yeah? Does, does that relate to the issue of what constitutes public record mm -hmm. for yes. the, the, okay. Yep. Yay. I would, uh, can I speak to that? Uh, I did read the draft that Jim prepared and sent around. I think that's a fundamental broader discussion that should be debated around the whole board. Uh, there are intricacies with and or assumptions built into the draft policy. And if that's just lobbed in for a vote without the full board being engaged in it, there won't be an understanding of the pros and cons of. So what I would encourage you to do is take any sort of those pros and cons and communicate that who is in the process of developing that. And then when we have that discussion, Jim will hopefully have incorporated some of your suggestions. And then when we have that discussion as a board, you can say here, here was my list of suggestions that Jim incorporated. He did a terrible job of not doing these things, and he did a good job of doing these things. Then we can have that discussion. I think that's a perfectly reasonable thing to do in the discussion and approval of whatever policy we're talking about. I think in the context of the shaky ground that y'all have uh, provided for me, that would be uh, folly to expect that my credibility and knowledge of that issue over the last 20 years is going to prevail over what Jim has already written. I'm, I'm going to let Jim decide that. That's not something that I'm going to decide for him. And okay. That's not something I'm going to decide for the rest of the board either. The committee will decide. Right. Okay. Anything else about bylaw policy committee? Great. Annual report in 2019 budget. Here we go. <laughs> so hopefully you've all gotten a copy of something that looks like an Excel spreadsheet printed out. So it looks like an <coughs> annual report printed out. Um, I'm happy to read this. There's, um, yeah, there should be some other copies floating around too. I think I printed enough for, for everybody. Um, I didn't, um, I didn't send this around because I was still making corrections to this and fixes to this as of today, um, and I sort of aspirationally marked this up at the top, approved. October 9th, <laughs> but uh, obviously happy to change it. It has not been approved yet because you're just seeing this now. Um, I, I think I would just like to go and, and read over it. If you would like to wordsmith it or change anything, I'm happy to, um, to make some minor changes. I don't want to go and be Wikipedia here and do corrections for three hours or anything like that, but if I made a big mistake, if I said something wrong, or if there's something big I missed, these are the sorts of things that I would like like to hear so that we can put this out. This goes to all the towns. It goes all to, to all the select board city councils, and it's their responsibility then to take this, consider it along with the budget, and offer us any commentary um, come our public hearing, which we will have on November 13th, where we will invite them to come and bring their comments. Or they will give their comments to each of you, the delegates, to present on their behalf. Central Vermont Internet is a communications union district, CUD, created uh, following successful votes in 14 communities at town meeting in 2018, all the towns. Two more towns, Cabot and Orange, successfully applied for inclusion in the district afterwards, bringing the total number of district member communities to 16. 
Several other neighboring towns have also expressed an interest in joining the district, though none have formally applied. Many places in central Vermont have limited access to truly high-speed internet, and in many places, non-wireless internet service is monopolized by digital, digital subscriber line providers. Even where there's a choice, the incumbent providers have little incentive to improve speeds or extend their networks to new customers. This lack of truly high-speed internet access stifles economic development, depresses property values, and restricts residents' abilities to access common services. We are grateful to the select boards and city councils for appointing the representatives and alternates who are working with us. Without these folks' volunteer efforts, we would not be as far along as we currently are. At the time of this report, Central, the Central Vermont Internet Governing Board has met six times, and committees have met several more times outside our regular meetings. Since we first met in May, we have reached several important milestones, including the important but unglamorous work of developing bylaws, policies, and a budget. One very important step we have taken is to rebrand Central Vermont Internet as CV Fiber, in the pattern of our neighboring CUD, EC Fiber. We've also written a mission statement listed in the footer of this document, and also expressed our vision for CV Fiber as follows. Vision statement. Even with this work complete, we still have much to do before we can start building our network and building our network and connecting subscribers. In particular, we will, we will be surveying <coughs> residents in our 16 member communities to determine how many of them are interested in fiber optic internet service. That information will help us decide where to do our first construction and establish a solid financial foundation upon which we can build to the re remaining member communities. We are exploring several avenues to finance our initial round of construction, including philanthropic contribu contributions, issuing promissory notes, state and federal grants, and partnerships with third parties. We are confident that the district will be able to begin a first round of construction no later than 2020, and if we're able to raise funds quickly enough, we could even begin in 2019. In closing, we ask you, community leaders in Central Vermont, for three favors. First, we ask for your help in encouraging your residents to complete the surveys we'll be sending out in the next month or two. Second, we encourage you to help us identify people and organizations willing to donate outright or willing to invest in our efforts to bring 21st century internet connectivity to Central Vermont. Last, we invite you to attend our November 13th meeting where we'll hold a public hearing to receive comments from legislative bodies of district members and hear all other interested persons regarding the proposed budget. Respectfully submitted, all of us. Okay. I got some proposed edits. Proposed edits. Fire one ready. Uh, about eight lines down, we refer In which, which, which paragraph, which page? First page, first paragraph. First page, first paragraph. Right. Where you monopolized by DSL line or, or cable. I would put insert or cable. I, I said in many places. Oh. Um, Where I live, certainly. Where well, John Montpelier, lives. Montpelier is monopolized by cable. That's right, but, but in many places that aren't Montpelier and that aren't Barry City and that aren't Barry Town, okay. it's DSL. Third paragraph. Can I, can I, yep, sure. Is, is your point that if you mention cable, cable is a more robust service and you're trying to talk about less robust service as DSL? No, nope. I'm just saying that there are some places that, that I would call underserved. Right. That are ser that are served by DSL, and I think that's terrible. I mean, going back to our Latin motto. <laughs> so that's that's what but I want to highlight. if they were served by cable, you wouldn't necessarily say that. Um, maybe. I wouldn't I mean, necessarily as, say. Oh, I'm just asking as, your intent here. As Barry City, I would definitely ask to put cable in there. Okay, so just so we're not closing. In many places, <laughs> wireless service is monopolized by DSL or cable providers. Yes. Okay. Got it. Uh, fourth paragraph, uh, including the quote, the vision statement as a paragraph. That's just, oh, okay. We will be surveying residents, insert, and businesses. Bottom of the first page. Second we'll be surveying residents and businesses. Okay, I can do that. And then scratch the word, inter or it replaced the word internet in the next line with communications. Okay. <coughs> and again, there's a, a regulatory foundation. Got, I got you. Um, Keep going. And then first paragraph on the next page. Yep. Uh, raise funds and develop a viable plan. We can't just raise money and start building. Okay. Uh, next paragraph, 
fifth line, scratch the word internet. Okay. And then I just circle as a question what phone number, what email address, and what Facebook page we're using. I recommend no Facebook page if we get a website. Okay. That's something that we can probably, we should probably kick to a committee at, at that yeah. part. So. Yeah, I recommend keeping Facebook and getting a website. Okay. Let's get to that in the assignment of committee tasks. I think that's something that we can tell a committee, go and make this happen. Is, is common services a term of art? That Pardon? Common services at the very end of the first paragraph. Is that a term of art? Is that referencing oh. a specific kind of mm. access common services? I was, I was trying to think of, um, it's not a term of art. I was okay. thinking of services, um, maybe it would be better to say restrict ability, residents' abilities to access online services. Or how about expected services? I just, I just, I was just curious. I didn't, yeah, it, it's, it's really. I'm thinking like people want to apply for a job, yeah. need internet access. Yeah. You want to like put money in your kid's lunch account, you need internet access. Yeah. It makes sense. I mean, it sounds like you point in your turn. Sounds good. So, common services. You want to leave it, change it online. I like online services a little better. Yeah. Okay. Consensus. Yeah. Common online services. Common online. Common online. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then the other thing that. Uh, we, we also, I mean, I know that I apparently didn't tell anybody <laughs> because I wasn't at last meeting, but we did acquire a domain name so we could add that as a, as like a, you know, success, a victory. Okay. Thanks, Elliot. <laughs> okay. I will, I will call that out alongside um, rebranding it as CV Fiber and then I will mention and acquired C, uh, CVFiber.net. Is that the one that we're sort of tentatively? Yeah. But you, you got Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah we, we talked about that. <laughs> yeah, a yeah, couple, couple of nits uh, yep. that occurred to me. Uh, one of which in the first paragraph, somewhere in there, do you want to bake in something about the uh, public safety that's directly affected or unaffected by our lack of internet services? And we want to address that? Let's, let's see. Find a way to put public safety in there if you think that uh, the room uh, uh, can reach a consensus on that. <laughs> okay, so, so, so this lack of truly high-speed internet access stifles economic development, uh, hampers public safety. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Because yeah. it is a significant issue, particularly in Elmore, where uh, there is no cell phone coverage for probably something representing 60% of the town. Okay. So, uh, stifles economic development, hampers public safety, depresses property values, and restricts residents' abilities to access common online services. How did we live this long without it? I don't know. <laughs> Somehow. And last paragraph, uh, along with businesses, residents, we want to consider institutions because they could become rather large subscribers. And it's it's part of our mission statement: residents, businesses, and civic institutions. Yep. Is this the part we're talking about sending surveys? This is a paragraph on yeah. sending surveys. Correct. And we will be sending surveys to institutions. Somebody else will take care of the sending. I just want to make sure that we... So, 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 like so, so, so surveying <laughs> residents, businesses, and institutions. Yeah, Res yeah, surveying residents, businesses, and civic institutions. That which matches the language in the mission statement. Cool. What else? Yep. Okay. Um, bottom of the first page where we... What did we change the fiber optic internet to? Fiber optic. Fiber optic Communication. service. Communications. Uh, communications. <coughs> Maybe I'm being fussy, but it's communications over fiber optic media. It's not really fiber optic communications. And I like to be clear when I'm talking to my customers. What the only difference <coughs> between fiber and wireless and everything else is it's a medium. Right. Should I say how many of them are interested in fiber to the premises? FTTP. It's, it's also kind of a misnomer, but there it is. I mean, but that's but that's the common. Yeah, it is common, common term. Uh, it's a good opportunity to educate them for that acronym too. But this sound like this is designed to speak to the populace. In which case, do we want to throw out terms that they're not going to understand? Anymore? So this this is going to select boards and city councils. Right. Well, so, they understand. Really probably, <laughs> probably not, but that's your <laughs> job. Even worse than the general. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so is there, is, is, there a, yeah, is there a better language that we can put here so that we can 
have your average select board member, or average city councilor, not to denigrate any of them, I'm one of them. How about cyber speed communications? I'm, no. Um, <laughs> I want to get back, actually, I want to drop, fiber's in our name. But I want to drop that that's our goal. Our goal is to deliver high-speed services to everybody. Okay. And by whatever means. And that's one medium, and so is wireless, and so is telephone line, and so forth, and cable. So how many of them are interested in high-speed communications? I mean, now we're sort of... We, kind of if, if you want to distinguish it from the status quo, you can just say ultra high speed or something like yeah, that. I, I would say highest speed possible. That's what I'm thinking of. This well, ultra yeah. high does it in fewer words. Yeah. Like, that's something that's understandable to the average person, I think. Ultra high speed what? Communications. Communications. Ultra well, high speed communications. Sure. Ultra can doesn't I, mean anything. Can I warn about using words that sound, sound like promises that we can't have a promise? You know, my select word, I know what, whenever they see a word like ultra, uh -huh. they are asleep <laughs> because they know it's not going to happen in Worcester. And they're probably right. It's a vision. So they become very skeptical of what we're doing yes. generally. And I don't think we're going to sow those seeds of doubt. Why do you pro propose or leave it the way it is? High speed communications concern. Okay. You know, I, 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 they're going to understand. How about that. higher, higher than we've gotten? So, John, I, I John had a suggestion that we use the vision statement and say high speed digital highway. Sure. Right. Fine. Great. Perfect. <laughs> or what if we said we will be serving, surveying residents and businesses and civic institutions mm -hmm. in our 16 member communities to determine what their communications desires and needs are? To determine their communications needs? I don't want to like determine people's desires <laughs> necessarily. Okay, well then they can decide what the, you know, I mean, the survey will sort of define that. But okay. So then it's putting it on, and rather than us trying to define what we're going to ask the residents if they want, the people if they want, we're going to ask the people what they want or need. Does that make sense? That makes sense, and I kind of like that language better than what I wrote, but Ronald? Yeah, I, I just, um, actually this discussion is a really great reason why we're going to the committee process to handle a lot of this mm -hmm. stuff. <laughs> and I, I honestly would hope that even if you have some disagreement with the language, and I'm, I'm listening to some real picky stuff here, you know, some stuff that is dealing with technical terms, things like that, that when I'm reading this, for the most part, I know darn well, and you go down and present this to the Williamstown uh, Select Board, that, that the detailed stuff that you're talking about doesn't really I matter. Agree. That's not what they're going to key in on. That's not what they're going to focus on. So I would hope that we actually give more leeway to the author to use wording that he thought. I mean, we, we have an author that comes right off of the Select Board. you know. So he's used to talking Select Boardies. And I, I think we should allow that to, we, we should kind of allow that to happen to the greatest extent possible that, uh, you know, that, that unless we have some concepts that need to change, that the specific wording, I would hope that we would leave it alone as much as possible. I, David hasn't oh, spoken yeah. yet. I agree with that. I, I mean, I don't know what committee drafted this, and I prefer a committee. <laughs> no, and that's an issue to me, to me, not having, you know, Getting this to a whole board of one, you know, at the meeting takes up a lot of time, which I guess we're all willing to do. But it'd be a lot easier if you had sent it out as an email and said, "I drafted this myself. I'd like your comments," and you would have gotten correct. Sure, you know, Chuck changes up the wazoo, but right. this is quicker than that. Mm -hmm. But I, I think you know maybe there's a way quicker, to, quick way of doing some of yeah, this. Yeah, and, and I should I should have had it to you last week probably. So anyway, that's building on Romans. The, the only other comment I would have is. Uh, just formatting wise and this I wouldn't do this for this one but you know like when you're doing accomplishments I like to just put them in bullets, bullets. not in narrative form just so that people can just skip them really fast and be like okay they do five things You've got it yeah. <laughs> anyway. leave, leave this alone do whatever you want yeah. with it because I agree what we're doing here is boiling the ocean it should be done in the <laughs> committee work but one of the formats that has worked real well in business and in military circ uh, circumstances for an annual report 
is the three P's. We present everything either as progress, problems, or plans, and leave it at that. And then if we need to talk about uh, what we want to do, how we want to do it, who we want to serve, we put together a little threefold, which is targeted to the audiences, and it doesn't come across as a report card, it comes across as a bit of vision. So we always used to use the three P's and then the threefold if you were trying to develop interest. And that's, that's for a future discussion. This is good enough for now, we've got to get something done. Yep. Okay. Are we expecting this is going to show up in the town warnings? This was a question that uh, who, somebody asked I think that I raised it earlier. Um, this is this is our report to the governing boards for their feedback. I think we can probably draft something that's more official to go into the, the town reports in each of the towns mm -hmm. that's more final. Because again, this is a draft budget. This is out there for the select boards and the city councils to weigh in on at our next meeting. So these are things we're putting them out and we're saying, hey, select board, city council, Tell us what you think. And they're going to say, whoever the crazy person was that drafted your letter, you know, you got to <laughs> fire him, right? And that's fine. And they can come bring that back and we can say, well, we're, you know, we're switching to a much simpler one-pager, you know, three Ps, and that's, and that's going to be it. And that seems, seems reasonable. When are you hoping to have this out? I'm just... I'm going to go to the next select board. I am too. I'm going to, I, will, I will have this done tonight. I will, okay. I will incorporate these revisions. Okay. Um, I'm, I will read through it again with the revisions, and hopefully everybody will be okay with approving it along with the budget. And I'm going to take this, and I'm going to ask <coughs> our trustee clerk to then distribute that to the other clerks and make sure that that goes out to everybody and the select boards get this and, are, and have essentially have a month to chew on this. Okay. okay. David, did you have something else? No, I just want to, well, I do. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> the budget. Let's, let's finish up Thanks. the annual report. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, first of all, I confess it was picky, and I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> um, second of all, I think we should, if these are going to the select boards as draft annual reports and draft budgets, they should use the word draft in their titles. Done. Um, third of all, I'm going to be semi-picky. In the first paragraph, um, and maybe I have a conflict of interest here. Incumbent providers have little incentive to improve speeds or extend their networks for their customers. Really? That's, I mean, that's, I'll attest to that in Roxbury. That's, yeah. I mean, that's that's my position. Yeah. Well, it's not true in every instance. Okay. I would assert. Um, and the other one is limited access to truly high-speed internet. Um, I guess you need to define that. Again, I was trying to keep it simpler. So my reason for being picky isn't because it's that important to get it perfect for the select board, but because it's like a trial run for something that's going to go out into the public. And so I thought that was why it was worth spending a little time on. But I apologize for wasting our time tonight. Scratch the word truly. But there's but 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 high no, speed. That's the point he's making. Right. So I mean, high speed internet. You can be that can mean anything you want. That can be DSL. Certainly, how it's built. Right. How about gigabit? But it's not the lack of gigabit internet that stifles these sorts of things. I mean, I I mean where I am, I want something other than DSL. I think a lot of people in this room would be happy with a step up. We're just looking at taking several steps up simultaneously. Right. And that's the case. <coughs> You're just trying to deal with aspirations versus achievables. So, yeah, so I mean, I, I you know, and I've said in, in other, other places where I've written stuff, I've written like 21st century. We have used the word ultra high speed and some of the, like the handouts that I gave at town meeting this year. Um, again, the idea is to communicate kind of the, what we are, why we're doing this, thank you, here's what we've done, here's what we're going to do. That was sort of my, my mentality in, in, in approaching this. So I would... Uh, it's fine the way it is. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about our future public-facing communications. So, so, let's, so if somebody will, is willing to draft sort of the language that sounds better, I'm looking at you, Michael, 
that's going to look better, that's going to sound like what we actually want on the future face of our documents, then let's, let's do that. And then when we go and we send an annual report to be inserted into the town reports, we can, we can have that then. I'd like to make a motion and so that we can continue to move on here that yeah. our chair has received yeah. his feedback and that we entrust him to take said, said feedback, yeah. deal with it as he sees fit, and distribute it to our treasurer. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Rama? Are we just talking the annual report or the just Just report. a report. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining. Okay, unanimous. Thank you for your confidence, everybody. <laughs> eventual confidence. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. E eventual confidence. Sorry. I do want My to say it's nice to see we're already going to see a surplus. Yeah? <laughs> so are you going to put the new like info at cvfiber.net on that? Yes, there was a, there was a mention of... Um, it was going to get kicked to committee, so I'm just... So it, it is going to get kicked to committee, but again, this is a draft. We have to say we registered it. I mean, we didn't say we're using it necessarily, but we've re we're rebranding it as CV Fiber, and we have CVFiber.net as our you know, future web location. Okay. The draft budget. Um, this is um, somewhat vague. This is as specific as I feel like I can be. Um, I had a, a long, productive meeting with Michael. Thank you very much. Talked about um, his... Um, business plan and his budget and I took a fair bit of inspiration from there and I also sort of in a very real way made things up and the reason I say that is that without knowing more about what our uh, infrastructure looks like and where it is it's basically impossible for me to say anything with any certainty what I did and I actually have the, the Excel spreadsheet the reason it says $180,000 for example in pilot construction is I took the $30,000 that we were um, told from EC Fiber and sort of consulted with Michael that that's at least kind of order of magnitude right, $30,000 per mile. So I'm sort of imagining whether this happens or not that, that we have six miles, six miles of fiber constructed, and that's including permitting, make ready, make ready engineering drops, and the actual fiber itself. Um, whether that's a realistic number or not, I don't know. That's why I'm throwing it out here for you to talk about. Um, the revenues. Um, so we have donations, promissory notes, grants. I don't know if any of these are realistic. Residential internet. So I'm sort of, again, made up an average, imagine $80. And if I, I just thought, maybe we'll be able to get them turned on by November. So they'll pay for November and December. There's two months. I think saying 36 subscribers. Six miles. Six subscribers per mile, minimum. There's 57, 60 there. Um, Operational, external business development services. I didn't forget about the business committee and they want to do that, but I took the um, $250,000 that they thought they'd need to spend and I thought maybe we, want to, maybe we want to cut that down a little bit and do something a little bit more modest. We have a lot of volunteers and people who would be willing to do pro bono work, I suspect, um, and we can probably get that number down to their um, financial Items, so including costs for accounting. So if we pay an accountant, if we pay for an audit, the audit's going to be quick. Um, any bank fees? Uh, office supplies. Anything we have to print? A post office box. $10,000 for uh, legal issues that may occur. Advertising, including the survey that <coughs> we're hopefully going to put out. Uh, maybe in January, maybe earlier than that. I don't know what that's going to look like. Uh, network operational costs. And I said... $50,000 in operational costs over um, for this six miles, that's probably probably high, I'm going to guess. And then there's Excel formulas here. I put the note in here to meet some statutory requirements. So it said, um, I say there are no deficits or surplus from prior years because we don't have prior years. There's no such thing. But the statute says you have to include in your budget any reports about deficits or surpluses, and I want to make sure we call it out and say, here it is, don't have it. Now, I'm going to duck. First, just, uh, when we, and this is just me not understanding, I, you know, I come from private warning, more notes means something very specific, you know, I kind of, 
finance and perspective, a promissory note for a municipality, how does that really work? Or how do you, what, what kind of an instrument is this really? It's an unsecured loan. Right, but what do they get, that's it? So, um, what do they I, get back for it? So, so I, I actually have the language of EC Fiber's promissory notes. Yeah. In, I put them in the, in the folder. Um, so promissory note and the way that EC Fiber had them constructed were um, the person wrote, th wrote them a check and what they would do is they had an 18 month interest holiday right. And then after the 18 months, I think the payoff was, what was it? So it's just an unsecured F interest period. F five years. Okay. And then they started paying, they essentially started paying back that stuff after the 18 months at, it was like 7%. It was a really, really juicy interest rate. Okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would encourage uh, anybody who, um, who wants to see how EC Fiber did it and that's kind of the more deep dive into what that is. It's in the, it's in the folder and I'm, I, you know, give a lot of thanks to um, to Carol over there for providing that. Yeah. W one thing that might be helpful to go along with this, and I don't think it's in, in the notes here. So there, there are formulas behind, for example, the 180,000 when you when you say it's six miles. It's just that it's equals six times 30,000. Right. What I'm saying is that would be helpful as a note. Mm -hmm. So that you can see why it's 180 and not 140. Okay. You know, just of course because it begs the question. So, so it might be a good thing to maybe have alongside like miles six cost per mile thirty thousand. Have that broken out. Like well, just to note, you could yeah. have a superscript B and have it below saying it in narrative one sentence. Assumes six miles is such and such a mile. Yeah, okay. there's some foundational assumptions to the budget, but yeah. that's really what that is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that would be helpful. Okay, I can do that. You, you, you said you've done this in Excel? Yes. Uh, typically what I do when I do pro forma budgets for the town and that sort of stuff is the column all the way to the right uh, gives either some key assumptions or some other factors so it's right there line item by line item. Okay, so if I add another column to the right of Tighten the, it up and have a, a, a column to the right that just basically, uh, you can identify it any way you want. I generally put in uh, <clears throat> Most, most of the time what I do is I put in the, uh, the simple arithmetic by which that number was arrived at. Okay, I can do that. I, th I think that's really the only place, aside from like the subtotals, which are literally just the stuff above added together, um, that's the only one that I have that's like derived from anything. Although, although I do have the residential, residential internet item that's in parentheses, I'll just move that over to the right. So to be consistent with the explanation of that formula. Yeah, right. if that's there's only two yeah. or three, I'd say do it as notes rather than make it more confusing with more columns. Okay. Okay, I'll just move it over into the left then. Yeah. So I think, um, the, I think the numbers are all off, and you're not surprised by that. They're, they're most of them are high, and and the income is unlikely. I mean, 36 customers is not critical mass, and I think he made a profit because of all the revenues you put up there, but I don't think that's how it really works. No. Um, I mean, I my experience is you need six or 800 customers to break even. And the idea that a little pilot project is going to turn a profit in a first year is you know, so it's, it's not fair to say that to towns, I don't think. So, right. So that, that net income is just left over from what I sort of arbitrarily chose as the... I, I realize that, but the impression it might leave. Uh, to, to Mike's point, I would say it's not unreasonable uh, if you look at large capital investments in business startup costs, you look at your cumulative <coughs> cash flow from which you derive things like profit and loss, you bathtub. It's not unreasonable to show a loss in your early years. In fact, most uh, entrepreneurs expect it. It's and the real issue is time thing. to break even and time to profitability. Okay, yeah. so, so here's what I would ask from you guys. I love that you're, you're deep into the finance because I don't, I'm not that sort of person. So tell me, there are numbers here, tell me what to change them to. Oh boy. 
<laughs> no, no, and then we. Does this have to be completed tonight? Voted on? So again, this is a draft. This is something that we're going out to the to the boards, and we're saying, here's what we're imagining. Come back with feedback. This is not final. The final one is adopted after our November meeting. I, I think the answer to the question, though, was yes. This has to be decided, voted on tonight. Yeah, so there's not enough notice to get to start June on this. Okay, it is. So how many items do we have? Hold on a second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We have eleven items. We can get through eleven items in not very long, I think. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, I'm just thinking, op, like, optics, optically, I don't relish the idea of handing my town, a, like, oh yeah, we're in debt. You know, like, I don't like that as a first impression, even if it's a realistic sure. impression. Um, I'm fine to like. Take that philanthropic donation, cut it by ten grand. You know, cut right. it until you're you're at basically zero. zero. Right? That's fine. Okay. But like, I don't want to hand somebody a debt paper. I mean, how That's my first interaction. A, how are we gonna run a deficit anyways? Okay. <laughs> we got a bank account, don't you? Run. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna run and hide. I mean, we're really gonna rely on debt. So the I mean, way you do it, can't follow some other. Yeah. The way you do it is you have a column for 2019, 2020, 2021, and you show that in 2021 you broke even. You're making a profit. Okay. And then people are more comfortable. So, with that. This yes. Is, this is crazy. Okay. I, I'm sorry. The process is Look, crazy. Let's have net income of zero. Yes. And do that by either decreasing revenues in the amount of 18260 or increasing Increase expenditures <laughs> in the amount of 18260 The area that you can obviously plug in 18260 is in external business development services, financial, right. office supplies, legal, advertising. Just just yeah. distribute the 18,000 among them. It, it, okay. It, so, so do we have consensus that the bottom line should say zero? Yeah. Yeah. Is that yeah. consensus? Yeah. 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 Right. It, it doesn't raise any questions then. Okay. okay. Huh? But, um, oh, go ahead. I just want to say when I made the, the amount last month, for the survey, I had the survey was going to cost fifteen thousand. Now it's lumped with advertising, so I don't, I'm not exactly sure how that happened. But so maybe that's the place where some of that money goes. So you have fifteen. So let's put another fifteen, make it thirty. I'd separate the two items. Okay. Three thousand two hundred sixty bucks less. So advertising, and we'll have the survey at fifteen thousand dollars too. So we're at three two sixty remaining. Yeah. Not Stephen. I'm really concerned that this is basically going to define this this document put together on the fly in an hour is going to wag the dog because okay. tell me what I need to change. It's going to create some assumptions. I mean, I would I would need a discussion. I, I know David contracted when he was in government with a, a group to put a plan together. We need a plan. It, and obviously we're not going to get a plan out of committee process. So a plan in engineering, I could see costing a hundred or two hundred thousand right there before we even ready to build anything. And we're not going to start building in a place with only six homes per mile. We're going to build where we can get revenue, the greatest some revenue right away. So there's so many flawed assumptions that are based in here. That's six yeah. subs per mile, not six homes. There's probably fifty homes, but only six signed up at eighty bucks. Siobhan? We are required to pull this out of our ears right. mm -hmm. by statute. We have a time limit on when this has to come out. We have no money. We have no plans. This is an estimate at best. And, but we have to provide it. We don't have time right now to figure out specific numbers for specific things. Because we have to get this document to the select boards before January? October 21st. October 21st. <laughs> October 21st. We do not have time. I hear you, but my oh, point... Hold on, hold on. So this body understands that. And we're not going to let this budget become the be-all, end-all of every decision that we make going forward. We understand that this is put together on the fly to meet a statutory requirement that happened uh, over a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And I don't see any of us being so unreasonable as to expect, oh, well, you just went over that $25,000. You can't have any more money to do that. I, I don't see us doing that. I'm done. Uh, 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 
<clears throat> mercifully, uh, the gods have provided a workout for this. Put up whatever numbers you want in there and just say preliminary estimate. Uh, yeah, that is considered. Yeah, that is over this. That's the way. <laughs> well, <laughs> the <laughs> draft, uh, preliminary estimate is, is a cop out because it implies, it suggests a slightly higher level of certainty so than draft. draft. <laughs> but it, it is nothing more, it's nothing more than smokescreen. This budget applicable when practicable. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to write that one down. Yeah, that's your new in line, like e email <laughs> sign. Gary, there's one more part in the statute that uh, it says we have to provide, and maybe you're expecting the numbers to do this, but in addition to a financial statement and a budget, we're supposed to provide a forecast presenting anticipated year end results. Net income. I'm sorry? Net income. I think it's reflected in the net income line. Zero. Zero. Oh, you mean, oh, I thought, I, that's interesting, because I thought it was supposed to present year-end results of our activities, not just the budget. But that was in the, the so, so and, and maybe that's the case, but I think it was, that's mentioned in the statute in the same breath as the budget, though, it right? Is, it is, exactly. So I would suspect that you could Okay. Reasonably okay, construed. Fine. That. That's great. No, that's I, I agree, and I interpret it the way you did, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I like your explanation better. So we and we do in the annual report, for better or for worse, do describe what we're hoping for mm -hmm. our end result to be. It's not yep. broken down by what we're hoping to do by so next more. year, but one other practical thing then, since one does reflect the other, and we talked about the foundational assumptions. I mean, the big ones are we're hoping to raise some. Philanthropic, you know, donations. We we really are. That's pretty good. <coughs> actually, the promissory note side, which is fine. Fine with that. You know, it, it counters with what you're able to do. But maybe that's where you put that one. You know, for 2019, we hope to raise, okay. you know, X amount of capital to facilitate the first four to six miles of construction. And just something really concrete like that. That's even if it's a little pie in the sky. That's just, you know, the aspiration. The plan piece of it. Yeah, so that's why you have progress, problems, and plans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you bucket everything in three buckets, <laughs> and you bolt them. So, so sh should I should I su suggest what we're, I'm, we're imagining getting in promissory notes and philanthropic donations in the annual report? Does that seem like a reasonably kind of like friendly amendment thing that I can add as I'm redrafting this? Sure. I guess. Mm -hmm. Is there any interest in the board in trying to go to the legislature to get some funding out of the capital budget for next year? Yes, yeah. yes, there is some there is some interest I mean, here, and and I know EC Fiber is doing something like that, and so so why don't you and I talk okay. talk offline yeah. about that? <coughs> okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, under capital, I would drop drops. Drop drops. Yep, drops, I think drops. it's safer because if if you if if we're going in a stretch that has twelve per mile and we get eleven or ten, we won't cover it because the drops are expensive. Of course. Um, kind of a segue on this survey part that David's going to work on. I would like to be part of that. I already have put a lot of effort into creating some surveys that I could. Add to what you've done. So the, the, the wonderful news is if we can get through this, the next item on the agenda is indeed oh, talking, talking about the survey. Okay. Yeah, Jerry? Yeah, I have, I have a question. I think that was a, an excellent recommendation about calling this a preliminary draft or something along those lines. My question is, is that sufficient then? Can we provide what we're calling a preliminary draft? Does, does that answer the matter? Yes. I mean, that's specifically what the statute calls for, okay. is a draft that okay. is that we are offering as a preview to the to the legislative bodies of the member municipalities and it's their job then to say hey you guys are crazy and that might be that might be bob saying you're crazy i need 3 years right well, you haven't seen my reply yet <laughs> right <laughs> or I've heard my other hat yeah um, yeah, yeah. So I mean, hold there's hold on a second. Jim, Jim's in line. I'd like to make a motion to approve this document with, with the following changes: that it be indicated as a preliminary draft, that the net income be zeroed out, and that the um, operational, external, business development services and other items under operational be adjusted 
to reflect the zero net income increase. I'll, I second. I'll second. <laughs> and I'm gonna let me do a quick friendly backwards here yep. and and uh, separate survey from advertising and add a survey item yep. in the amount of fifteen thousand. Yeah. So you, was, you would give him permission to do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then I will neaten this up in terms of the, the formulas. Okay, so there's a motion to second. Any further discussion? Yeah, I get, just to throw in real quick that, you know, it, it is anticipated in the law that we may, you know, let, let's say this budget came to fruition for 2019. It is anticipated in the law that we could move things around on the budget items. It's just we do have to file an end of the year report with the select boards letting them know if we did it. That's the only thing. I, I mean, there's nothing that stops us and says, well, whoa, we really do have $300,000 in revenue, you know, so we might want to spend money. So anyway, I just thought I'd throw that out. So even if we agree on a budget, we're not locked into the spending. We just have to be able to justify it to the select boards if we change it. And I don't want to get too deeply into this, but I think that there are many other revenue streams than what's listed here. Um, that you know, it's fine. Look, this is great, great assumption. I think there are other, there are other. So we can collection. Yes. <laughs> 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 um, dunk tank. The other thing I, I would consider dropping residential internet um, revenue altogether from the first year. We're going to be lucky to pull it off in a year, even utilizing, let's say, Valley Net Services to get it accomplished. Make ready um, can take godly long. It takes longer than the statute allows because the companies and <coughs> responsible don't necessarily follow statute. And right. So it's going to easily take more than a year. So, so, so the, the reason I put it in there ju is in part just to show that we're not relying entirely on sort of one-time things, that there is going to be a regular revenue source, or at least, mm -hmm. again, more aspirational. And if that number is zeroed out in our end of the year report, it's okay. That's, yeah. that's okay. I mean, we, we you, might not even build anything. It's okay. It's fine. It's yeah. I just wanted on. to make the point that my experience is it takes a damn long okay. time. Any other commentary? Yeah. I think putting the year two, year three, putting the revenue in there, but leaving it out in, in 19 is the way to do it. If you are going to expand this to a three-year window, you're so not going to. So I'm not going to because this is, this is a, just, just a budget. This isn't a business plan. It's just a budget for okay. well, a particular year. What I would ask to consider, very high-level overview, that we put at least enough, anticipate enough revenue or donations or promissory notes and put enough expense in there to get a real business plan and a real engineering plan done because if we're if we're not putting at least that amount of vision and money and belief in ourselves into the budget the people who are most likely to throw a half a million at us are going to roll their eyes these people don't take themselves so, seriously hold on a second so the engineering the, the network design is is in there so it's, it's a capital expense yes sir. it's not enough Okay. We so, need twenty five thousand for a business okay. plan and probably a okay. hundred thousand. Point of order. Engineers. Point of order. We said thirty thousand dollars. EC Fiber came to me and they said engineering, pull make ready, operational cost, wrap into thirty thousand dollars. Listen, this these are the numbers we're given. Let's use them, let's move forward. Somebody's gonna point me somebody's gonna point at me and laugh and say, Ha, oh, you can't possibly do that. I'm not gonna give you my money. You know what? Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're this is a statutory responsibility. Somebody who is an accountant, somebody who is a financial person is going to take this and write something real, okay? They're going to write the actual business plan. What Michael has is not what this is. What Michael has is his three-year business plan, and it's beautiful. And it's got tabs, and it has formulas linking different tabs together. And you can change one thing in one place, and you can look at the final breakdown, and it's, it's wonderful. It is not what we are supposed to be doing. Yeah. So... Um, at, at some point, at some point, we will, we will vote on this. <laughs> at some point, okay, we have, we have a, we have, we have a, this is not debatable. She's calling the question. Is there a second? Yes. Okay, so calling the question requires a two-thirds majority to, um, to cut off debate. So, so we have a second. So um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. 
The ayes seem to have it. The ayes do have it. Motion passes. Now we're ready to call the question on whether I think that was uh, Jim. Was that your that was your motion? motion. Yes, it was. Okay, with okay. some of these changes. Who seconded calling the question? I did. Okay. Okay. All in favor of Jim's motion about the budget, <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining. Thank you. Thank you, by the way. This we will. We, 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 we will get back to it. I I, <laughs> I promise. We we will. Can I make a comment? Please. I want, I want to make a comment in support of what Stephen was saying. Um, engineering as part of construction is different from engineering as part of conceptual design of a network. And okay. I believe what he's speaking about is the conceptual design of the whole network, not the design, not not the engineering of the actual construction. Okay. And it is a separate line item, and it's an expensive one. And the other thing I think he's suggesting is feasibility study of some sort. That's a useful thing that we may want to be considering on a budget in the future as well. And can I please point out, we now have, we're, we were supposed to have ended this at uh, yes. 7.45? You can point that out. So, so, I, if we could continue moving so the agenda. If you, if you can do it in 10 seconds. Sure. I'm wholeheartedly objecting to the fact that this was sprung on us tonight at the meeting with no preview and then rushed through haphazardly to a decision. Okay. So it was, it was given to me as a task to build the budget. I got no feedback from anyone, so I wrote it we myself. We should have seen it two days ago. Okay. No, come Interesting. on. Let's go. So hold on. I, I met with Michael. I sat down. I put some ideas together. Three hours. <laughs> two hours. We spent a lot of time. Yeah. And we sat down, and I put this together. This is a draft. We will have an end of the year reckoning. Okay, don't worry. Moving on. Thanks. Surveying member towns and pilot projects. Um, I think we ought to be looking at pilot projects for next year. I think we ought to be surveying people. And uh, what that survey looks like, I'm not entirely sure. But I think that we ought to be sending it to, I'd like to see it to everyone in every member town. Wow. Right. Hopefully it's not a um, um, hopefully it's not a paper survey that we have to mail, but unfortunately you're not going to get terribly good representation of the people who need internet service the most if you don't physically mail it or if you don't physically knock on the door in in some capacity. So I'm all ears in terms of how we ought to go surveying and gathering the information about um, our likely set of subscribers. I, I'd just like to say, I, uh, when I talked to the select board in Williamstown and they appointed me, as I told them I, I had a two-step process to go through, and the very first priority I had was to get the organization up and running, and once the organization was on solid foot, then I was going to worry about equity for Williamstown. And they had no problem with that. So I, the reason I mentioned that is because I, I'm not so sure that our first time out that we want to just kind of do a buckshot around all of the, what, 16 towns. You know, that really can become an expensive survey and it can become very involved. And um, I, it may be that we want to focus it down more, kind of get, in a, get, get some idea of what we would like to run as a test project and then look around and see what communities meet the requirements for us to go in and do the the uh, do whatever it is that we're looking to have done on that specific. So if you've got a proof point, point, you're better off selling it to everybody else in support of the idea of a test project. <coughs> now, when we've done we talked about in the past, the best sales tool that you've got is to prove that it works. A small proof point is a lot better than all the surveys in the world. Okay. So so what, what, what I'm what I'm hoping that we can get done tonight that we can talk about and hopefully resolve is more about what is it that we're surveying? What is it that like, the, some of the questions that we're asking, or at least we can get to like some sort of general idea there, and then maybe we can talk about scope soon. Do we target just? I'm gonna pick on you because you're sitting next to me. Do we target just Roxbury? Roxbury is one of our most underserved communities. Please. In addition to Elmore, do we survey Elmore and Roxbury? I mean, even if we sent a, a, a letter to everyone in Roxbury and everyone in Elmore, that's not going to that's not going to cost very much. Just saying. Or do we talk about scope now, and we worry about the actual drafting of the of the survey? Do we hand that off to a committee? I think it's something that we need to do sooner than later. 
two, two things just to share. Um, I would agree that finding a project that we feel is going to be a good proof of concept um, and the appropriate space and then targeting a survey on that would be our best use of time and effort, um, a place where we think it's going to succeed uh, and is viable. Um, as far as the second point would be as far as what we are surveying, um, I think something that would be critical because literally in the last two days three people in my town have come up to me and said, what's going on with the internet? Uh, and I've had long discussions with them and the questions really were, well, what's going to be different than what we have now? So somehow in the survey, I think identifying what would be available how it might differ from what is in that target zone that we're looking at and how that might change. For instance, in my situation to have 50 megs, I could lose my phone, I could lose my satellite, and I'd probably save close to $200 a month on my whole package of all that. And so helping people understand that as opposed to just saying, you know, how do you like 50 meg? Well, a lot of people I don't think are going to be able to draw the the line in between those two points of information to see how it's going to affect them potentially and how it might be beneficial. So you might not need to sell it, but at least explain to them what would be potentially available for them because they may not know. Okay, that's a good point. So quite a bit of information in there in addition to just saying name, address, whatever. I think you're more likely to sell it that way too and have them respond saying, oh geez, I, I, that's available? Um, because I, for us in our town, most of us don't even know, know it's available because it's never been available to us. Um, I just, I think that the survey questions should be developed in committee. I don't yes. think we should be yeah. sitting as, as a board good, good it's good developing. Okay. Business development committee, I think, already has this, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Okay. You first. So is it is it on the is it on the, like the list of things to do for the business development committee already? Yes. <laughs> yep. Okay. Okay. So take take John's suggestions there as advice, and we can we can circle back around to that. Yeah. Can I make a suggestion that we go one further and have this be one of the things we ask for money for? Because I think if you unless somebody has data analytics and needs assessment background that we don't know about, um, or that I don't know about, um, I think you're not going to get the quality of information that you want out of a survey that we come up with ourselves. That's just... Okay. And I'd also say the other, I, it should be, a, it's a big task, maybe, but can we bond this a little bit with just having come up with the plan and the, or whatever, our, what's our... We, we as a bigger group, what's our bigger goal? Like for, are we all willing to sign up and say we're going to do one town, X miles, Y potential, Z signed up? Well, I mean, that's sort of what was aspirational in the budget, I think. Yeah. I mean, but, can so, each of you identify in your town a six mile stretch of road or roads that you can, you could go and talk to people and get yeah. 36 subscribers? No conflicts of interest. <laughs> well, right. So, 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 do, so, what if you? I mean, what if, what if each of you, you know, knocked on six miles of doors between now and the next meeting and identified, or, or whatever? I mean, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm just saying, yeah, Jerry. Yeah, I don't think it's quite as simple as that. I think you, re you really need to develop. I mean, typically, you're, if you're going to have a questionnaire, you're going to go through focus groups and discovery groups. It, people, the, for the example that you were describing, that you know, folks can give up their 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 package and get everything through the internet. The the whole idea of medical information being able to to get through the internet for folks that can't. People don't know that, so there's an educational component. There's an educational component to doing any kind of questionnaire, mm -hmm. and I don't, th I don't, I, I don't think you can just go knock on doors. I really think that 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 questionnaire needs to be developed. I think that's part of what should be done in the committee work, and and I I wouldn't jump to going out and knocking on doors yet. So, as someone who has gone out and knocked on doors for this <laughs> particular project, 
and spoken to several hundred people about it, in particular in Northfield, because I needed to get it on the ballot in Northfield. Um, I can give you a list of names right now who have already told me that they want this and will sign up. But is that all we want out of a survey? No. Right. But it's a place to start. It, but if I can say there are these people on these roads that I already talked to, we can say, we can just we can put a survey together and we can survey them. Or you people you folks in your towns you can identify, you know, where likely people could be and we could do something targeted. So I don't know that we want to go through the focus group. No, I'm not thing. recommending that we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, but, but, but I'm saying that we, I'm hesitant to, to, to go this weekend and start knocking on doors. I, I, I think we're not quite there yet. We've, about, we've gone back and forth in the business development committee about, you know, about how to target. You know, we have information that can help us target. And, and I, I don't think we're quite there yet. So. I, I agree very much that this, you know, really should go back, somewhat go back to uh, go back to committee. Okay. Uh, I don't think it's quite right. It, okay, Michael. I want to make three quick points. Um, first of all, uh, Becca, there is lots of software out there that does this. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's all kinds of survey analytical software that we can use to generate surveys that then solve the data digesting problem. Could you could you send yes, that, that software to I would do that to the committee. <laughs> yeah. Um, two, um, we shouldn't survey everybody in every town. We should survey every six people on a road and then develop data from that sample, just like the pollsters do. And three, um, we have to be really careful. We don't load the survey with questions that will give us the answers we're looking for. We want to present it so that they make the tough choice. Will you be willing to spend this much money to get installed and this much money for your internet? And you can make it a push-pull question which will help you eliminate these services. But you want to make sure you're not loading it, the survey up so that we fool ourselves into the into a, Thinking we're going to get a take break, we're not going to get. That's that's it. That makes sense. Uh, a lot of this discussion is founded on an assumption which we haven't agreed to yet, which has to do whether we lease service. Lease. There's abundant infrastructure out there that we can lease and turn up customers in the next three or four months, and we have not gotten to that discussion, which was part of my vision opportunity after you and Michael spoke four <coughs> meetings ago, and we were really. I mean, I'll raise this with the Business Development Committee because I think that we are misguided in thinking that we're going to just build new fiber at 30,000 a mile to every customer we get. There's lots of customers that are available without building. Okay. And, and identifying where that fiber is it will, will be important in that calculus. And we should have started that already. But also not offer 50 megabit if we know we're working for a statutory goal, which is 100 symmetric by 2024. We're not going to build anything less than that. Where did I say 50? So uh, Roxbury said he'd be happy with 50. Well, he said he'd be happy with 50, That's but if, but if we give him 100, he'd be, he'd be, he'd be fall, <laughs> falling down. But detail started out at a gigabit per second, and there's no reason we shouldn't do that, you know? Just, just for the point of being constructive, um, is there is there a direct? I mean, you just said we should have started on this fiber. We should have done this. We should have done that. Is there are there directives that we can send to committees? Or you know I will raise like, this thing in the business development committee, which I'm on. I just realized that yeah. this is not uh, going to happen until the business development committee lobs it up here. It doesn't do any good for me to. So 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 business development. Can we set up a meeting and have a good uh, um, vigorous? Discussion about this? Absolutely, and my and my apologies for being out of town for the past two months. So no. it's been, <laughs> no. I haven't been available. No, it's, it, it's so yes, we we have uh, we have some business development work, catch up work that we that we need to do. Uh, there's no question. Mm -hmm. I just reiterate the comment. We don't need to necessarily plaster the whole town, but there are we could look at statistical significance and figure out you know how many do we need to hit and what's the random sample we should go after and then there's, there's <coughs> methods around this to save us. Money because otherwise we're wasting. Absolutely, sure. Postage is expensive, actually. Um, I, I, unless this really involves 
people here going and knocking on doors, um, it's going to cost something. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's going to be a real expenditure. Uh, and I, I worry about finding real revenue to cover that expenditure. I mean, it's great to put numbers on paper, but this is something real. Mm -hmm. So there's something else that needs to be done then, too, clearly, and that's starting to shake, shake the money trees. Yeah. I mean, I can start you know, talking to people and asking them and sort of floating these ideas, but aside from the one person that I know who's willing to write us a, um, a check, essentially, to say, get going, somehow I think that the $500 or $1,000 is not going to be quite enough to get us even across that modest finish line. So yeah, there's obviously there's you know two parts of the balance sheet and we're going to need to pursue that as well. Doesn't hurt on the surveys. Regarding, there's no issues welcome here. <laughs> regarding revenue, um, the one line item that wasn't in the budget was for crowdfunding and I think we could take advantage of that. That is now legal in Vermont to crowdfund Oh, actually, uh, equity crowdfunding is legal. This isn't equity. Um, we, yeah, we can't offer equity. No, we can't. But we may still be able to crowdfund with promissory notes. And they could be small ones. Um, mm -hmm. Look into milkmoney.com. No, no, no. no I, that's, that's, a, that's a good point. Doing it through doing it through milk money or doing it like crowdfunded promissory notes. It could notes. be like $500 or $1,000 promissory notes. That's Let's a, do both. Let's do crowdfunding for donations and crowdfunding for promissory notes. Of course. I mean, so it's philanthropic donations, that could be crowdfunded, and the promissory notes could be crowdfunded. So the mechanism for how we do these things, I think we don't necessarily need to break out. No, but it's a, it's a, it's a way to deal with those $500 checks. No, so it so also asks that we work with, consider working with the schools, because there's an army of students going out with a well-designed survey could cover an entire town. So the, the, the how of the survey needs to come after we choose the scope and after we choose what's on the survey. So let's, let's, put, let's get to that when we can. Jerry? Yes, yeah, so the, the, the idea of uh, shaking the trees and getting the finance going, I, I know at one point I remember we, we were saying, well, we needed a bank account. Mm -hmm. Now we have a bank account. We will, momentarily. <laughs> so can this be on the agenda for the Finance Committee to develop a tree-shaking plan? <laughs> is that is that is that not where this belongs? Um, Didn't we think another can, can committee we, was going to do that? Yeah, we thought that was going to be business development. It was going to be business development. It's business yeah. development. Yeah. All right, then then let's let's put it on the agenda for business development and uh, come back with a, a a plan for tree shaking. Well, I ask people for money, I usually end up giving them some. So I know where to go to now. On that note, can, might I suggest that we consider shifting business development as far as writing a plan and a pilot and a you know, survey, et cetera, is going to have its plate full and that the money shaking strategy might ought to be transferred to finance. I think it was transferred out of finance. So, 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 so hold on. So let's, um, let's, let's circle back to that. I, I think there's probably some wisdom there. Um, I'm not sure that I agree with it necessarily, but let's do that on the next agenda item. Is there anything else that we want to talk about with survey? Or we sort of st basically agree that survey lives in business development and we're going to wait for their response? I would agree that the survey details and all of that belongs in business development. I think we need to talk about criteria for scoping as a board at some point, not necessarily tonight. But is that something that the Business Development Committee can come back with a proposed scope and that the, the overall board can then? Proposed criteria, perhaps, um, for determining what the scope would be. Like, do you have cable available? Is this time? Oh, yeah, no, you. Yeah, that's, that's the specifics yeah. I was, I, that I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That gets yeah. to the board from the yeah. We'll, br we'll bring you, as I always uh, consult it, we'll bring you the Cadillac option, yeah. the middle option, <laughs> and the free option. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else about uh, Survey Member Towns pilot projects that we need to talk about now? Great. Moving on. Review of back burner items and assignment of committee tasks. So this is. Um, down on the back burner, we've got four items there. Are, are there any of these things that we need to take up soon or that we should simply strike and get back to as a back back burner? So I'm seeing the outreach to other towns, Washington, Waterbury, Woodbury. Is anybody going to do this? Or we should just let this organically happen if one of you happens to talk to somebody there and it, they just appear. <clears throat> I talked to somebody in Washington and, and I said, talk to your select board. 
I think can, can we kick that one to the survey bit to portion of the business development committee? I bet personally, I, I, I don't think so. Adding new members doesn't really make sense. No, it's just whether we survey them as part of a potential adding them. Thoughts? They're not in, we'll do it. Yeah, I, I, I think we need to keep our focus yeah, a little bit sharper. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so shall, shall we, but will we eventually want to do outreach to other towns? Do I need to leave this on the back burner? Or yes. sure. should we just yeah, yeah. We, we absolutely okay. need Waterbury and potentially more town in our economic model. Okay. Net neutrality, is that something we're going to bring back as an agenda item soon? I'm not sure it's, what it was the first It's marketing, really. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's a philosophy that most of us believe in, but its role in the process is marketing. So, so I don't know that it has to be now. Did anybody notice that dude didn't bother to show up here? Who? St. J the, that's just the commissioner was in St. J. St. J. Yeah. He didn't come by here. He didn't come by and see us. I don't oh. know. I mean, I... <laughs> All right. So, I think that's being handled by the AG. It, so in, 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 in honor of Agent Pie, we're going to strike net neutrality. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Nobody quote me on that, please. Okay. I, want see, I want to see the skeptical eye flick go to the left and the right. Well, just, just the eye flick. They almost rolled the Jeep in uh, Springfield. Though. He's watching. Okay, great. That's cute. Um, relationship to the Vermont Telecommunications Plan. I think that one should come in sooner. And I, I think for a couple reasons. One, because it has to do, I, I, I mean, if we're going to go off into coming up with any small project to start with, it should be in relation to the uh, telecommunications plan. Okay. It's also, I mean, if you listen uh, to the gubernatorial race right now, it's, <laughs> it's between fiber optics and I, I, everybody's promising the world. So yeah. that, that is the opening, though, for us to get in there. And, and you yeah. spoke that there were people ready to go talk to the legislature. And, and when the governors, whoever comes out to be governor, is going to be that interested in, in the topic, whether it's imperfect or not. For the first couple months. Well, this is the time, though, to get no, to the, into the legislature and to start talking and to actually start lobbying. Lobbying both. Take it either way. You want to take it. And uh, to, to start talking about this issue. So I, I think we should bring back the Vermont Telecommunications Plan sooner so that we all understand really what's so, in so it. So in the interest of time, can I say Vermont Telecommunications Plan November agenda item? Yes, because there should be a draft out. From the department, there's a new draft coming out. Yeah, good. And so we should have it in time for our next meeting. I think so. Super. Great. Uh, Callous pilot discussion, public safety committee. Those are two different things. Okay. Yeah. Just it was for the for the sake of space. I put them put them there. Well, we had just had the you know a discussion about pilots, not specifically Callous, but I think we broadened that to look okay. at what might be. So I think that's already in the works. Okay. We'll scratch. Okay. That uh, public safety. I don't know. We didn't. I think the scope of what was proposed for discussion about a callous pilot was different than what the business development community is going to take on. Right, and and so I, I recall you introducing the callous pilot discussion, and I remember that the rest of the board not having a heck of a lot of interest in actually having that discussion. That was my remembrance. Please correct me if I'm not saying this correct, that correctly. Okay, so not hearing anything, I'm yeah. going to assume that what I just said was true. So yeah, if the guy from Calus doesn't want it, then <laughs> well, I don't think we're there yet. Personally. Okay. okay. I mean, I'm going to go on so, my select board next again, week, and I'm going to ask. In the interest of time, uh, Public Safety Committee, does that need to remain on the back burner, or does that need to go away, or does that need to be brought up, or what? It needs to be brought up because there's a meeting next. There's a joint meeting at the Barry Montpelier. Okay. What is what is the what is the agenda item here? What's the agenda item here? There's, there's a overlap, a significant, substantial, almost complete overlap of the Central Vermont Public Safety Authority and the, its new members of the Capital Fire Mutual Aid, and they are an anchor tenant in a communications network. They're planning to rebuild a radio network, which is going to require fiber connections to every radio transmitter. And they would serve as a good anchor anchor tenant on our network, but it's going to go to Fairpoint or consolidated if we stay asleep at that switch. 
and they need telecommunications planning help, as do we. Okay. So th th thank you for that. Is that something that we need to put on the agenda item on the agenda for our next meeting? Is that something that we need to pursue? Is that something that needs to go to a committee, or is it something we should just leave it on the back burner where it is? Sounds like a business development committee question. It's developing new potential work. I just have a very, a very fundamental <clears throat> question. Does the timing of these things match up at all? Is there any possible way that we could have the infrastructure to service the need that's being decided in the month? And if it's not, then let's put it aside, and when we're capable of addressing that, address it. No, they have to raise a million and a half dollars to build that radio system. So there is a parallel okay. track. But so what's the pleasure of the board? So I'm, I'm, I'm not hearing a lot of enthusiasm. And if, if I don't hear anything, we'll just leave it on the back burner, and we'll come back to it later. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, my silence isn't... A lack of enthusiasm for the Public Safety Committee especially, uh, though I do think the Callus pilot was a, an interesting one to think about, but um, the Public Safety Committee, uh, yeah, I, I think that should stay there, but we should be ready to bring it back because I, I do think that that's an opportunity for a quick, you know, a, a quick amount of customer, a quick amount of usage, you know, if we can get hold of the pipeline to because these guys are going to be making use of a lot of uh, communications if they get it up and running, and that's enough. Right. And so, and they're going to be raising a million dollars, right? It's going to take a while. Okay. Right. We get that. Yeah. Yeah, that, and they're going to be working with Consolidated. So eventually, they're going to be looking for somebody else anyway. <laughs> Okay. Assignment of committee tasks. So we had the um, um, setting up the website. And that was good. Was that going to go to business development as well, or was that going to go to? Is anybody here able to just make a website for free? Or we all. Right. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I can't personally. Oh. I mean, so so oh, so we get GeoCities. You 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 donated as a tax writer. Google gives free web hosting sure. sites I mean, available. I, I mean, I've yeah. looked at it. Yeah, so, so, at it. It's so so hold on. We we actually have a possibility of where we could get web hosting for free. I, I'll talk. I have a very uh, progressively minded business. Associate who does my website runs an internet company, and he may I could talk with him. I think he might be the type of person to approach to protect potentially not only can do they host them, but they develop them. They're very good. Um, so if that could be a tax write-off then as a donation, <coughs> it might be something that we could look into. We like that. Thoughts? Yeah. 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 We keep the discussion open that they may develop a site for us, but we host it under our Google domain rather than have to get into the reliability and diversity of okay. circuits. So somebody's going to give us something for, for, for free, and especially if they're doing development. I want to, I want to find out what's, what's on offer before we start Absolutely. making any decisions. Absolutely. Can we Absolutely. just like move forward yeah, with yeah, this yeah, yeah. passively? Yeah. Thank, thank you for that, John. Um, so website. Um, and so I'm going to make a motion that we um, sort of uh, hand the Business Development Committee um, the task of looking at <coughs> fundraising, looking at um, the proposed scope criteria for the survey and potential targeting for the survey. The question that you have is, which what did come up is, are we overloading business development with too so, much uh, from a planning and then a as a, as a as a point of order, that was a motion. So if somebody would second that, then we can chat about okay, it. Second. Okay, so it's seconded by Phil. Thank you for that. No. So, so are, are we overloading the business committee? I, I think almost definitely. So should we have, I mean, the one thought is that we have a separate development committee more in the nonprofit sense that's really, you know, the run the go fund these or the pre-subscriptions or the whatever it might be, even if it's only two or three people, just because that's, you know what I mean, and then, I don't know, it's just a thought. So, so have the development committee be have a separate development committee that's doing fundraising, and have the business committee doing the survey stuff and the other Surveys stuff. Surveys, planning, doing. and yeah, market execution, partnership, all those types of things that are more of a business plan. Fee for service versus. Yeah. Okay, so 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 what I would what I would, yeah, Jerry. I think that's a that's a very good idea. There there are only I believe five people on the business 
development committee. So, you know, it's, it's, it's and, and one of the things that we found is that we really don't have enough hours, man hours, work hours, you know, uh, full-time equivalencies to get a whole lot done. It's really hard. So it would be great if there was a, either a separate committee or a subcommittee or at least five other people or four other people that could be working on that, separating out the, the fundraising from the, 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 the surveying aspect it would be really helpful. Okay. Yeah, I also, I, I think the fundraising should probably be separated out. That, that's a specialty into itself, and I'm not offering myself. It's not an area I'm terribly good at. So, but there are people that are good at it. There are people that have the connections, whether they're professional or personal or whatnot, who, and there are people that, have, that are better at it. And, and so, you know, business development and, and getting the money to fund the business development, I think, are two fundamentally different topics. And, uh, I think we ought to be treating and approaching them differently. Okay, so on a, on a practical matter, um, the amount of time we have is, is limited. I, I tried with the agenda. Sorry. Um, <laughs> But um, unless I'm seeing three people jumping out right now and saying, I'm going to be on the development committee, I think we just put this on the business committee and we can figure it out. Understood. Thank you. It's fine. Nobody's it's fine. leaping out and saying. Is it, is it possible to help out with specific tasks and not be tasked on the committee? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I'm, I'm down for that. That's wow, I love the sound of that. You, you, yeah. you heard that, John? I heard that. Yeah. Great. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Bring me to, I, I mean, I'll What's try your to. Name, sir? Andy Gilbert. Andy. Well, I'll, I'll try to, I mean, I'm just thinking we have a, Kevin's a little unique in that we have an organization that's a nonprofit that has, that's fairly well funded, and I can ask them if they'd be willing to help with this. Um, that would that that would be great. I mean, it was and it was them that reached out to me initially. Yeah, yeah. In terms yeah. of getting Cabot yeah. on and board, they're very here. good at this kind of thing. So. Very much. Okay, so <clears throat> I made a motion and it was seconded about giving fundraising and survey criteria and targeting stuff to the business development committee. Um, any further discussion about that? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstaining. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Um, anything else that we need to assign to committees that I missed? Does the, uh, does the finance committee want to take a deeper dive into budget? Do you want us? I would. I would like that. I mean, because um, so I chuck this out there, and I'm not sure how we. Would. I'm trying to think on the on the uh, is people with enough expertise to help provide input on building, building the budget. So and, and the, the people on the finance committee itself think that we have the expertise to sit down and I, I, I'm not sure that we have the, the, yeah, okay, so let me, let me rephrase that. I'm not sure that we have the expertise on the finance committee and somebody correct me if I'm wrong here to actually for us to build the budget for this particular type of operation. Okay. Having said that, the Finance Committee can certainly oversee the building of the budget. Um, but th that's going to take a, a, a longer discussion on, on the process to go through on, on actually building it. And okay. I was hoping, I was going to catch you after the meeting because I was actually hoping to talk to you about it a little bit. And uh, okay, it's it's a process that's got to start so, at some point. So, so, you know. so, so, so let's just talk about it offline. We don't have to make it a formal declaration of responsibilities. Or anything else that committees need? No, good. Uh, approval of the September 11th meeting minutes. I'm going to move that we approve the September 11th meeting minutes with the changes that were submitted to us um, by Rebecca. She submitted that uh, earlier this afternoon. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? There were a couple other points of clarification that I received after I sent that out. Okay. Um, I just that up. Sorry. So, um, that's it. Um, I had that um, 
Can you tell me which page? Oh, yes. Um, maybe not. Okay. Uh, somebody had one of the hard copies, so I don't have to have like, multiple screens open. Here you go. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see, this would be on page two. Thank you. Page two? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in the second paragraph that starts discussion included, um, there was a clarification that there were two appeals to the head of agency. Um, and just to further clarify that the claim was addressed to the head of the agency, which I think is clear in there, and not David Healy individually. Yeah, I, rec I mean, I would like it to reflect that I specifically said I made two appeals to the head of the agency, Jeremy Hansen, that were responded to in the court of law. And secondly, the, ex the executive session, the purpose was probable potential litigation not only with CD fiber but by CD fiber against the municipal entity that's not providing data. So I made the motion. That wasn't that wasn't the motion that I made. I'm I'm saying these are clarifications. The the minutes are not complete. I think we would, let's table the minutes till next meeting and get this around in writing. Why are they not complete? The tense discussion around why the request for executive session was okay. made, right. as well as the uh, two different potential litigations or more, as well as who was responsible for responding to the Okay, appeals? were any were any actions taken on these? Say it again? Were any actions taken on these items you just brought up? No, but the reason So uh, we don't really have to have that in the minutes at all. So I mean it, this this is a degree that we don't have to yeah. get to if we choose not to. And I would I would say they're fine the way they are. But are there any other changes that you have? Um, no, there was just additional clarification of discussion, but there weren't additional actions. Okay. Any further discussion? Yeah, well, the action to not go into executive session needs to have the reasons why we, the proposal to go into executive sessions were in there. Correctly. So, the my, my motion. <coughs> so, so we need we need the we need the motion. We need the dip, the disposition of the motion, and that's really all we need to record. So, I think that's what I think, Alan. That's what you're saying. Really. That's so, my motion, and I um, clarify this because the way it was originally written in the the draft minutes that that came a day or two afterwards didn't have this finding of premature general public knowledge of that discussion of the probable civil litigation would clearly place CBI at a substantial disadvantage as a prerequisite to enter the executive session. That's language that I that I provided to Rebecca. I made the motion. So the fact that there were multiple other possible litigants or targets or whatever, that was not in my motion. I mean, it was it may have been brought up as part of the discussion, but it was not my motion and is typically up to the person taking the minutes to decide how much detail they choose to include. And we as a board can approve it or not. So, I mean, it's really up to um, everyone here whether to support these meeting minutes as they're amended or, or not. I think it merits postponing until you've got more time to digest it. So because is that, is, this, you don't want to in, invite uh, an open meeting law violation of incomplete minutes here. Okay. Is that a motion to table, Mr. Whitaker? Yes. Okay. Is there a second? We have two motions on the floor at once. We, we, for this, we can. Okay. So, is there a second? Motion dies for lack of a second. Is there any other discussion? Uh, so, the motion is to approve the, the minutes with the um, changes s submitted to us by Rebecca earlier this afternoon. 
I trust everybody had, had a copy of that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Okay. Abstentions? Marshfield abstains. I wasn't present at the meeting. Okay. So we have, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I 10, abstain. 11, 12. Were you tw at the meeting? 12 in support. Okay, so 11 in support, one opposed, three abstentions. And who seconded? I think I did. I think, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's what I think. I just want to make sure. Okay, 80 minutes. Round table, we'll start over. New business, and cross road. Quick question. Uh, new business gets, I mean, you can do it in your, in your little round table tidbit when it goes around to you. Okay. So, so why don't you start it off then? All right. Um, I think it would be useful for us or a small committee to consider any potential improvements on the CUD enabling legislation. That's a, that's, that's a great point. Thank you for that. Jim? Pass. Rebecca? Um. There are some of us that could use a picture, a literal picture of what's on the poles that tells us what we're looking at when we look at a pole. Hmm. You need a diagram. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch the top too wide. <laughs> Pass. Pass. Okay. Thank you all for your continuing work here. I, I do truly appreciate it. I'm really curious about the possibility that the minutes could be incomplete when the meeting is recorded and published somewhere that the public can get at. So I don't see how that's even a thing. But, okay, I guess that's it. All right, I just want to report I met with Delco, two people from Delco, <coughs> and they are uh, interested in you know working with us in any way that works. They're in business and they have a lot of fiber. None of it's really close to us. I think the closest is to um, Roxbury and um, Woodbury. <laughs> it goes to Harvard. Anyway, the, the meeting was good and they would be willing to share a limited share of their you know, network data with a non-disclosure agreement that had limited access to who had use of the data. And you know the typical way for that happens is that everybody who uses the data has to sign the agreement. So, um, and then Washington Electric has put me off until the end of the month um, because of their negotiating on their rate agreement. <coughs> um, and then the other one, I had an offer that I'd like to, you know, Vantage Point, which is a company that's built a number of community fiber at home, they've offered to present, uh, you know, their experience working with those communities, and I'd like to go ahead and see if we can get that scheduled. So um, if I can just kind of go out of order here, um, I've probably received 25 of those. Okay. From all across well, the country. Well, we need to do something with it because it'd be, learn, it'd be great to learn. So, so we will, I think we will get there eventually. I, I think inviting too many presentations mm -hmm. of that sort, I mean, l l like I said, I have, I have probably two dozen organizations, especially after, after things were publicized and after the vote passed, it was okay. it was a flood. I was getting calls every day. Okay. So. Pass. Pass now. Suffer, don't die. <laughs> <laughs> I yielded my time to David. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'll be getting in touch with folks on the business development committee so that we can uh, tally up some uh, some meetings coming up, and also. Just to follow up on what the both of you had said about folks willing to give presentations, it doesn't always have to be to the full board. That's right. If, if we can get a we can That's get true. a group of people that are willing to do it, uh, let's roll through it and gather that information. We don't have to all get it at the same time. That's that's a great point. Thank you for that. Bob? No additions. David? Yeah, I think that I know who Vantage Point is as well, and I think that we are. Founder, foundering from lack of uh, 
it informed step by step how do you go about getting from here to there and what are your options and what's the technology choices so the sooner the better that we we embrace learning what these networks are made of uh, the more faster we'll start to make progress okay one more comment um, Laura Sebelia, who's in the legislature, is convening with her Southern, I forget the exact name, with Southern Vermont Economic Development Organization, something like that, mm -hmm. a broadband conference in Southern Vermont. She's invited me and some others to present to it. Northeast Kingdom Collaborative got wind of it and they want to have a conference, a similar conference. So that's the proliferation you're talking about. Um, I'm going to go there speaking as Kingdom Fiber, but I did mention that I'm on the C CD Fiber board, and if they wanted me to talk about that, I could, but that, that now I've realized I shouldn't speak for our organization without authorization. So my question for you all is, should I not, should I say, well, I really can't speak for the board, or should I speak in general terms? about what we're doing. When is the conference? Uh, I forget. I think it would be better for the board to have somebody else re representing the board and King to Fiber representing King to Fiber. I think it would be confusing to them to have to sort through the potential conflict. I think it's probably true. So if you want to tell yeah. Laura or whoever's organizing it, send me or Rebecca or yeah. somebody a message and we can figure it out from there. OK. Thanks. Good. Okay. Elliot, do you want to have the last word? No, no. Book <laughs> adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Leave. Aye. Aye. <laughs>